Well, no, it, it's not a paid thing. It's not even on the state's technical inventory of dams. Because oh, I got, no, because I got in that conversation with them. Oh, okay. And it's listed as our land, but it's really water sewer, and we need to get that yeah, we do. figured out. Especially if something goes wrong with it. So this is right. in addition to what I already mm -hmm. signed. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. How you doing, Miles? Okay. Good, how are you? Yeah, Great. Yeah, no. Very well. What is the one for this bank for? Um, that's the credit card. So oh, it's split okay. up with a bunch of different kinds of expenses. Just curious. That's fine. Since my name's on it. Uh huh. So checks and balances are all about different eyes. Alright, folks, it's six o'clock. Workshop. We have the uh, students from UNH coming in at 6.30, so we're going to um, go until then, and then um, we'll, go back. we'll work on the, the agenda. I think we can probably go through most of it very quickly tonight. Um, Famous uh, uh, I don't believe any department heads. Yeah, well, I'll back up. Um, I spoke to the police chief today. He's not coming in. Um, highway, George is on vacation. And um, we don't know about Mark. And the building inspector has the flu, so we really hope he doesn't come. So <laughs> I don't believe either way, anyways. But um, so we should be able to get to that really quickly, and then go back and do some more work on the, on, on the budget. Okay. okay. All right. So I believe um, you have a spreadsheet with the most up-to-date um, changes. Um, Caroline, do you want to walk us through the um, the um, Changes you made under insurance and um, anywhere else? Um, sure. The two. Um, so there are a few things. I think there were like three or four outstanding. We were waiting on final numbers, right? Right. Okay. Right. So um, the only thing left open with 
insurance was life disability. Okay. Um, so that now reflects actual. There was no change in the assessing contract. The assessing contract is level until the next reval. So the numbers that are there are the actual numbers. Correct. Which Perfect. are the same as earlier. Okay. Um, so there are changes to the um, life and disability insurance is based on um, salaries and job codes, but still we will be fine within the previous year's budget for that line. Okay, where um, they, they um, it's personnel administration comes after financial administration, it comes after executive. Um, it, it's probably two or three. I don't need page numbers because I'm looking at the whole sheet. So before government buildings? It's right after, it's after government buildings. Uh, after? Actually, it's before. Yeah, it's right before. It's right before. Oh, okay. Yeah, thank you. So health insurance is in the calculator with the AB20 and what we know about plans for next year. Okay, okay so that 33% is not totally increased. That is based on changing in plans. And the increase, and the change in the policy. Correct. Thank you. All of that. <laughs> okay. Yes. If we hadn't changed the policy, it would have been higher. Yes. yes. So. Yeah. Thirty-three point three percent is high enough. I, I'm sure we can all agree that it could have been worse. I guess. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I plugged in a number under planning for your consideration. I'm sorry. You said like. I just want to know that I'm on the right page and that's all it is. Life disability insurance is, is, is good, you believe? Um, it's fine to keep it level. Okay, yes. all right. So planning, sorry. Um, so, so planning and zoning secretarial. Yep. I budgeted that to be $12 an hour. If you want to keep it level, yep. then... I don't remember what the figure was, and I didn't make a note, but it's in an email, and I can... What was the budget committee secretary getting? Um, 1071 an hour, which is the I same as that higher. position. I thought it was higher. Sorry. Okay. If we had... Oh, well, I guess we'll get that in the meeting. Never mind. I don't know. I'm not going to ask a question. Um, all right, so... So it was eight forty four before this <coughs> update to twelve dollars an hour. Eight nineteen is the previous budget line for that. Right. On on the last printout, it was eight forty four instead of eleven sixty. So that may have been at the that may have been the number for the previous for the current pay okay. at what I estimate. I I took that that number is based on eight hours a month. Okay. So I think that's a healthy cushion. She hits that, but she's not necessarily every month. So we should be okay with that. Is it eight hours for both planning and zoning together, or is it each eight hours a month? Um, it's not each. It should cover both. But, um, well, the 1160 is for planning. There's a second line underneath it, 400 for zoning, which mm -hmm. I bumped up because there just seems to be more activity in zoning. Mm -hmm. But maybe it doesn't, you know, you, you can see what the history was in those lines, mm -hmm. so. And the planning secretary is doing um, a lot more of the organizational work for the planning board. I don't know if Miles can attest to you. I can or? attest that I relied on her heavily um, to get all the running around that happens and noticing and minutes and she does research. Um, yeah. She did that for Pat as well, so. I don't know how long she's been in the position. I don't know if she was there before Pat, but. No. Okay. And zoning, I'm, I'm assuming she still does the noticing and all that for, for the zoning yes. board, too? Yes. And I'll reach to the, um, but she did the coordination of the mailing and all that. For, oh, yes. For, she does all the, the notices, and all she that. does the postings, yeah. and, um, puts it in the paper. Right. She corresponds also with applicants over their fees and any missing items if they forgot mm -hmm. and a butter, things like that. Right. 
She looks over the abutters list, which is really critical because you don't want to notice something and not have it hit all the people, and then you can nullify the proceeding. And she, and she has volunteered. I'm assuming I'm not the, on the planning board anymore, but she had volunteered to um, to have backup for Andrea if she couldn't make it to uh, mm -hmm. the file thing. So, and she's taken on. She's willing to take on additional responsibilities above and beyond what she's already doing. So, so twelve dollars doesn't seem that far out of the, out of the realm of, uh, of possibilities, considering what she's doing to the, to the planning board and her assuming for the zoning board as well. We want to be equitable, though. I, I would well. We we always try to be equitable between the different like the recording secretaries and things, but. Sarah's not, it's, say who it is. The person who's in the position is doing a lot more than than just taking the notes and, and, and filing the minutes. I mean, she, I mean no one was, was more than mine. There's more meetings than to attend to. Well, yeah. and I would argue that those, so. those responsibilities should stay with the position, right. Right. regardless right. of who's mm -hmm. in it. Right, no, definitely. There needs to be that continuity, regardless of who's in that position. It should, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so the change is 1061 to, to 12, just so that we're... If that's what we agree on, I mean, it could be 11, it could be 71. Yeah. Right. To 12, I'm, I'm fine with that, I think that that... So that's a $300 increase? <coughs> yeah. All right. So how do you feel about that? I'm okay Danny? with okay. it. I want to I be fair as possible. She does a lot of work, and she's good at it, so... I think the one... Yes, she is. I know having a bad. I think the one thing we may have learned from our um, our um, budget committee um, secretary is we may not be paying the right amount for um, a um, for someone who was a. I, I want to be careful how I put this. I'm sure the person who was doing the job for me was a fine person, but may not have been the the right person, the right fit for that position. Let's just say that. And what we were advertising at, at the time, we, we didn't, as I recall, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think we got a lot of takers, did we? Even oh, that, no. even that, yeah. when we bumped it, because it was lower when we had bumped it up, didn't we, slightly? Not a lot, but we had bumped it up, so I, we really should be looking at, at that as well. We were seeing if we can get, this is the salary for that, to see if we can get someone who was, who, um, who is the right fit? I'm just going to say yes. like that. Yes, and I, I would hope for that as well. And I'm concerned about our ability to recruit because I know that area communities have yeah. postings for the same position that stay open for a long time. Yeah. Um, it's also my goal for this position that um, that person be available to fill in for the select board and other yeah. boards when there's yeah. mm -hmm. a need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so why don't we... we I mean, we, were, we haven't passed. Have we gone to the final budget committee yet? Do we have any? We might have gotten not gone by yet. Are they under? Um, I think we need to maybe just revisit everything. Yeah. I, I'm so confused about what we passed and what we haven't passed, but it's kind of bouncing around. So So why don't you go ahead and um, budget committee finish up your... Budget committee is in the executive. Right. I saw that. Why don't you go ahead and finish up your... Um, so we've made changes and we've um, the only other changes I made were to the police um, retirement and um, payroll taxes. Okay. So those are all up to date. So everything we have in, in, in before us now is all up to, up to date? Yes. And, and this is the most up to date version of the default budget you've seen. So okay. um, I would caution you to be looking at that column as well mm -hmm. as you're evaluating mm -hmm. your proposed budget. So the. The changes in the police department's salaries was due to them asking for three and we went to two. Is well, that right? Or was there something else? No. So to be clear, three was approved, um, but not everybody got three. So the effect was closer to two. So No, so no, we, we voted you, you for voted 2019 2%. for 2%, not yes, three. Yes, for everybody. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But I know what you're saying from last year. Right. It was three was approved last year, but not all got it. Right. right. Okay. So that those are the all the changes. Yes, that's all. Okay. This is showing the decrease from last year, sixty-two. 
64. And that's what I was speaking okay. to, was that it's the across the board on the current salaries, not on the previous budget line. Because the previous budget line allowed for everybody to get a 3%, but that was not approved. Okay. So it's a 2% it's a increase on the actual current salaries. Awesome. Thank you. Now well, we can go back to the very beginning. I just wanted to get through all, the, all this, the major changes she had she had made. So I did keep notes on what we've yep. finalized. I don't know. Maybe you did as well. I'm sure I did. I've got to pull up that that uh that one though. We had not finalized the um, executive office, right? Um, which contains the budget committee. Um, secretary. So I would suggest that if we're going to, we should make this um, equitable, and we should increase the budget committee secretary to, um, let's see, twelve dollars, I guess. But so my only caution, though, is is that the I, w I want to be able to attract someone that's going to have a little more longevity um, than, than the previous person, but. Um, I also want to recognize that this position, although it could, it doesn't currently, I don't know how the, the current board chair is using the secretary of services, but um, doesn't do as much as the planning and zoning secretary. It doesn't have the same type of responsibilities, mm -hmm. so we should recognize that. But I also want to get someone who actually wants to do the job. So, I, I Do we have an estimate on the number of hours this position works? Probably have a budget of four. I mean, it looks not, like it's about 100 hours based on more. Yes, approximately, but it's not based on, um, it's not in a calculator for a um, number of hours. It's okay. just in a calculator to increase with the across the board. I mean, meetings range two to three hours mm -hmm. each meeting, and then it's time, the time to do the minutes. Yep. Times so the amount like of minutes. Five, five ish, yeah, maybe hours probably. per meeting. And then, of course, you're going to have more meetings. November, December, January. Do they cover, do they cover well, the every public week. hearings? And the yeah. one budget committee public hearing. Yeah. That's that's the big one. Yeah. Um, right. And that's going to be a lot more. So you've got 20 hours for the quarterly meetings, plus you've got probably maybe six or eight other meetings. So probably about 100 hours is mm -hmm. about right. Mm -hmm. So we don't need to increase the the amount for hours, but I would suggest that 1071 probably isn't a, is it the right dollar amount to attract mm -hmm. a, 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 a serious applicant. Can, you, I'm wrong, can you put a sliding scale in there? You know, say 11 to to 12, and then base it on what you get. I mean, well, can we so do that? the job has been posted, but it got posted without a pay rate. Okay. Because I didn't want to presume what mm -hmm. the board wanted to do mm -hmm. with that. So I would suggest that once we have some applicants, and we don't currently, that um, you evaluate what you get and talk to the people and see mm -hmm. what their requirements are and go from there. But then, okay, but that's fine. But you're going to have something in there. We budget. actually I need a, a number for the budget. So. But even if we budgeted, say we budgeted 12, doesn't mean we have to give them 12. Correct. Not that I'm trying to pad budget, but I'm just saying, right. in case you get someone who's really good and who also can cover select board and other jobs, right. uh -huh. you know, you might want to put a little more per hour and not necessarily starting that person with them. So do you want to recalculate at $12 an hour for us? I want to see how much of a... You're not going to get much padding there, so... <laughs> no, I know, I know. Well, it's $1,200, so you still have room. If, if it's 100 hours, right. um, you have $1,200 for $12 an hour. And, we're, and we have 1380 And you have 1380 so you can still afford, assuming it's 100 hours, you can still, you know. So we don't actually have then to change it. we don't have to change it. I think, think we're fine. I think we're fine at that point, yeah. Okay, that's even better, then. Yep. We'll just budgeted $1,200. So hours. when we advertised, we can get into this in the meeting, but... Um, we just use like Indeed and things like free services, right? We didn't yes. use. Yes. So we can talk about that. and maybe realisting it at and giving a dollar amount that might attract some more people in, uh, up to uh, up to twelve dollars mm -hmm. an hour, whatever the experience is coming out. Okay. So, uh, was there anything else in the um, the 
executive office that we need to consider, Caroline, that you can recall? I don't believe so. I thought we covered everything, but or Denise or my. I didn't see any other notes. Um, the biggest one was. Uh, oh, can we the, the finance and admin secretary? Yeah. Why did it go down so much? Because um, it's for what would be the new position because there's oh. a town administrator and okay. So are we um, are we good with the uh, with the numbers that are presented for the executive office section? I am. Are you ready to act in these? Do you want? I can wait. Yeah, no, 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 I'll try to rush. I'm sorry. Okay. All right, so we, we will accept the numbers uh, on the 1029-18 spreadsheet for the executive office. All right, uh, elections and registrations, we already finalized this one, yep. did we not? We did. Okay, are there any other, well, we're, it's still open, I mean, we've had discussed it, but if there's any other new insights or new questions or revelations we should be considering? My own concern is on um, the um, voting booth is if she spends 925 and she's only asking for 700, that's all she can spend. If she can't get it for 700, then she doesn't buy it because it's clear that she spent more last year on a voting booth. So why she's not coming in with that amount? Maybe. Um I wonder if she's trying to buy the same exact style. I don't know. Or if she's using the same vendor. Yeah, we know? Well, well, let me add this to the mix. I believe that was a, um, a floor model. It was a floor model, so it got cheaper, right? So, so I'm not sure that... I believe the 925 was a floor model. Which is cheaper than what we would expect to pay, and then we're only asking for 700 But the year before that, it was 541 But that was a different It was a different thing. style. Thing. Thing. Okay. It's one of those card tabletop. Table the, yeah, things. well, it was the tabletop ones, I think, right? Maybe. Yeah, I think it was a tabletop. Yeah. So, so why don't we adjust this to nine twenty-five? Or, or, I just want to make sure that, that she yeah. or that position understands that that is the money that has been allocated, and you have the opportunity, knowing what you spent last year, to ask for the same thing, and not to have to find the difference somewhere else when done the budget. That's all. So why don't we just say that we're going to increase it to 925 to reflect the actual the actual expense from 2018. Unless she has some cheaper model in mind, and if she does, well then the $225 can be used for all set taxes and stuff like that. Now the default would be 700 though, however, right, Caroline? Because it takes from last year. Correct. Yep. All right, so let's say it's 925. Based on last year's purchase. Mm -hmm. okay. so it's thirty-five. New bottom line is what thirty-five thousand fifty-three dollars. Yes. Wow. I can still <laughs> add. <laughs> How about that? I'm taking that away from you here. Simple numbers, anyways. All right. So, are we good with it? With that one change then? We'll close the books on uh, final answer. Final answer for elections and registrations. All right. Oh, we've we got a few more minutes. Right? Fifteen more minutes. Okay. Financial administration. We had um, the audit numbers. We 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 have confirmation that, that is the that is. A I have not heard back from him, but I would say that given the trend over the last two years, you could get away with that number for one more year. Okay. Because it went up for five four hundred dollars, so you'll just barely squeak by, and then. Okay. We'll have to do something else for next year. All right. Is there any any other questions or adjustments that we need for this section that anyone sees? No, we're in the tax collector's um, position. Does that contain what she? gets paid to do that's in the, the planning and zoning. Okay. Well, okay, so that's a really good point. Um, it should be under planning. Well, it should be under planning and zoning. Um, we need to... Can we go revisit that? Yes, I think we ought to revisit planning and zoning. 
So mileage is part of that. Mileage is in exactly. Oh, we have, no, no, well, well, we haven't gotten there. You yet. can get there when well, we get there. Well, but well, I think, let me get there um, when we get there, so we don't go out of. Out of uh, that's fine, but we should probably add a line for um, yes, plan for sure. filing. Yes. Okay. And that should be reimbursable. Well, so we have, or we have reimbursable services, and we just put it in the reimbursable yeah. services that's line. That's probably a better which, idea. Which was otherwise intended for professional yeah, have it come out of there. services and consultants. Yeah, we can okay. do that. Yeah. Okay. But we still need to remember to increase it. Anyways. That's a great point. Thank you, Denise. Are there any other? So, do we don't need to change anything under financial administration? We're good. Okay. Okay. I'm going to accept that. Uh, what's the number? Thirty-nine thousand eight hundred fifty-five dollars as the mm -hmm. bottom line for that. All right. Revaluation. All those numbers are the actual numbers. Yes. So I'm assuming we don't. We're not going to make any changes. We're going to reach in there. Good with revaluation, personal personnel rather, administration. The numbers are the numbers, right? For for insurance and all. Do we have any anything that we believe needs to be adjusted? No, I would say in there. We change paychecks to five thousand. I think it looks good. What is the um, employee safety line used for? Um, that was a line created at the request of Joy Loss for something that could perhaps be accomplished for like um, first aid boxes, oh. for example, or, or something that could make some area safer. Okay. Maybe batteries for the AEDs or something like that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm good. We're good with that one? Mm -hmm. Alrighty, so we will accept uh, or so. 188827. Mm -hmm. All right. That one's done. Planning and zoning. Here we are. So under, where to go? Reimbursable services. We have 5,000 for approximately five different projects of reimbursable services. What so, did we figure every time? What, what did we say? I don't remember what the rate we set for... Um, Peer reviews going over. Uh, oh, to the to. I'm um, sorry, I don't understand. Like that. What, what what we're charging applicants to for to file at the registry? Fifty five. Fifty five per per trip. Per trip. And that's not. That's what we charge, and then there's a cost per filing per page. But they they write a check. That, but yeah, they they write a check so, that, so we don't have to worry about that. That's a right. check directly to the registry. So. Right. How many um, how many did we do in the last year? Did you decide miles? To eight, something like that. So let's see. And was that that was your, you had one full year miles? Or? I'm trying to remember. I think it was over a year. Okay. So I'm trying to think what before that. What well, I don't know what that sign. I don't know how many you did. So eight times fifty-five is four forty. I think maybe just do uh, even ten just to be safe. Just do five hundred to be safe. Mm -hmm. yeah. The, yeah. And how many projects do you believe we had mm -hmm. for um, uh, professional services that we could have used as line under? Do you think it was ASPE? Over on um, the Blue and um, Building, there was up on Wentworth Road. And um, yes, those two so far this year, um, going back, um, Oldenburg Lane, or the off of Clement Road, mm -hmm. is right. another one. That's one that's coming, too. Um, it's coming, yes, again. Um, CNJ. There's, there's two, I don't know for sure. Well, um, CNJ is like happening now. Like that. Well, they that that already happened, but they're paying for it now. Okay, so, so that's that's okay. So that's okay, like so that's, four-ish. That's half, like in. Okay, I'm just thinking ones we know about for next year already. There's going to be Oldenburg Lane. There'll be something down there because he's going to put a. Yes, to for road. I'm sure within so the next year. I'm I'm assuming. Uh, there is. Um, um, it's, uh, it depends on when Wentworth gets, right. when Schindberg gets their stuff done, we may have to go out there. But there's also um, Mark Wentworth over at Greenview, pointing so at the imaginary road that's, well, the road that's over there. 
Yes, that's a potential. There's two. So three. Well, three. Three. Oldenburg, um, Tinburg. Oh, Tinburg, yeah. And, and Greenview. So there's three that we... Um, Apsi's probably going to need. Um, something else? Well, it, you know... Maybe. Yeah. Um, inspecting what he's doing. I would think. All right. So I would say four that you, you are really aware I of. I think we should at least... We should play on five. To be safe, to be honest. Uh, yeah. To, and, and it could be more than that, actually. Those are, so those four that we know, we're pretty certain, we know will be happening anyways. Oh, your thing, Denise. It's anyway, it's a crap shoot, well, so I have uh, yeah. Do you think five miles? I think five. I think that's safe. Yeah, we'll say five then. All right. So what exactly does that mean? Because you kind of lost me. Five projects. What is that? Well, the reimbursable so services? Well, the reimbursable services. Have so been, five times what? Or well, in the notes, it's approximately $1,000 per project. Okay, so that's why we already have So that stays, that stays a five. So, oh, okay. Sorry. And then, then how many we think should be filing? I'd say it's 50 up for, what, 55 uh, a pop? Which is going to be more frequent than the engine, than the consulting yeah. services because there's right, mergers right, right. and things that don't go. And I would say, to be safe, probably 10 trips. Because sure. if yes. we've already did eight yep. this year. So 550? 550, five. I would say, yeah. Okay. And just to be safe. I mean, it's reimbursable, too. So, And this is one of those that I, I have more, it's a much smaller number, too, but I have much more confidence in this one than the, um, the uh, police duties. Mm -hmm. So. So find the reimbursable services, 550. All right. So that would be now 5,550. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so it brings us to 14,779. Yes. Any other issues with planning and zoning that anyone can see? Okay. I think of? <coughs> Denise, how do you think? I'm okay. We good with that one? Okay. We will settle then at 14779. Where did you get the other? Uh, never mind. Yeah, where'd you get this? It's 4229. So where'd you get the other $50? 550, $550 for under. Um, Reimbursable services for um, five thousand five fifty. Oh, five fifty. I have. Five. I thought it was fifty five hundred. Okay, sorry. That's right. It's fifty five dollars a trip. Mm -hmm. right, so. Okie dokie. What do we got? We got a few more minutes. Um, government buildings. Okay. Look at this one. Did we already finalize this one? I don't. Don't think. I don't think we did either. Did. No, I don't have it checked off. So. I don't know what we're waiting for. Or... So one of the questions I recall is the highway garage and its maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, it was budgeted much lower um, in the current year and the previous year, mm -hmm. and it was noted that um, it was going. It was up to cover um, expected roof repairs and some things, but the note from the previous budget was that. Perhaps it could come down. So um, we can wait and have George answer to that to see if he had plans. I don't know what his thought was yeah, with that request, was. but the number in there reflects his request. So, highway garage, does that include also the transfer stations? No, it has its area. own repairs and maintenance. Um, okay. They're not always in the same, they're not always grouped well together, but there is another one for, um, below it, two, two below it on the next page. Okay. So I know that he said there was a, there was a couple of projects that still hadn't gotten done. Wasn't, um, it had to do with exhaust fans or one I for that, the bathroom got, for one, or did that get done? I don't think the bathroom got done. He did a hood, I believe. But the large ones above got the done, I think. Yes. Done. Okay. So I don't know if he's done with the loft. Um, he did that. I think the last time I was in there. I mean, it looks to me, but that doesn't mean. Yeah. I don't know. We 
thinking no. When is George coming back? It's not until the second, yeah. this Thursday. So if we could maybe ask him for Thursday or Friday, so we can um, oh, no, we can no, finalize Saturday. it on Saturday. Yeah. Why don't we hold off on that? One? And we're going to uh, um, six thirty. So we're going to recess the budget workshop and come back to it after we hear from. So it's 6.31, I'm going to call to order the regular meeting of the Wallace of Select Board for October 29th. The first order of business is going to be here from Kyle Kencher? No, I'm uh, Aaron Tebow. He uh, could be in uh, either uh, prior. Okay, well, come on up. That's good. Uh, Are you all okay, together? I'm, I'm oh, here, no. I'm here uh, uh, kind of running oh, okay. back up. Sure, Kyle. Oh, right. Oh, do you want to wait a few minutes for them? It's okay uh, if we do. It's, it's, if it's better for you. It's up to you. I don't hold it. But, well, let's do it then. Okay. Uh, here's our couple of references. Um, I just, I needed a couple of uh, important points, I guess, interesting areas, so uh, the intersections. Just a second. Oh, uh, so just for, so, to get them to their names. I have Aaron Kubo, that's T-H-I-B-E-A-U. Uh, L-T. What? U-L-T. U-L-T. Thank you. Sorry. And Colin Lentz from the Stratford Regional Planning Commission. What is your last name? Lentz. L-E-N-T-Z. And I did speak to Kyle on the phone on the Friday, I think. All right. Um, so I, I touched base with him about his program a little bit of his sort of corridor history. Of okay, that. perfect. Awesome. Um, Go right in. Sorry. No, 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 no. Um, so I highlighted a couple of uh, in areas that's as built plans from the highway resurfacing in 2011, I believe. Uh, I have a couple of areas of concern. Uh, first one being the uh, intersection of Bear and Roberts. Roberts. Um, sorry, I'm not from the area. It's okay. um, so basically, I wanted to solicit you guys' input on what's important to you. Um, I'm, I came here to also reiterate it's a student project. Um, they wanted me to emphasize that. Why don't, why don't you give, uh, before we, 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 we give you our two cents, okay. why don't you um, just back up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, I've got experience with, with, with dealing with the, the student capstone project on a previous board here, yeah. um, but my two colleagues are, are newer and they don't. Okay. So why don't you just sort of walk us through exactly what your um, from an academic standpoint, okay. what, you're, what you want to accomplish, what you need to accomplish, and then um, from a practical standpoint, but the actual project, we can dig into that. Okay. Um, for our senior capstone, we go through, I guess, um, I wouldn't say a mock because it isn't a, a real project, but we go through what it would, from start to finish, or start to like a PDR, um, preliminary design report. Uh, we get a little experience in, in design, uh, a little experience in permitting kind of try to pull everything together that and put our skills to practical application. Um, we don't do as much practical application as more as we do crunching numbers and learning math and doing math. But so this is kind of putting everything together at the end of our um, term at UNH. Um, we working with the DFT. Uh, a lot of different projects. We get to choose the project our, our team gets to choose what they want to do, um, kind of based on their approach to their careers. Uh, so we all chose this one, we got put on this one with uh, Bill Lambert from the DOT, and we are uh, working with That's something that you can use maybe for a solution. Okay, yeah, right. okay. And you're all civil engineers. Yep. Uh, if you want to bring chairs on it, why don't you come on up and tell us around the table. If you, if you want to, you don't have to. <laughs> if you're just here for a uh... uh, Before we get any further than that, I'll let you guys settle down here. Why don't you, uh, just for our minutes, you introduce yourself. Brooks, Megan Wilson. <clears throat> Joe Dutal. Tim Gabby Michelle. We better. Joe what? Dutal. How do you spell that? D-U-T-I-L-E. And mine's Gavin 
N G A V I N and M O S C H E L L A. Thank you. All right. Uh, I was just giving them an overview of what are capstones all about. Uh, I guess our objective at the end is. Um, but the objective at the end is to give you guys something that you can maybe put in your 10 year plan, mm -hmm. maybe solicit funding with. Um, basically, a, something in hand that you can show that this is what we want to do and help you get to the next step. Okay. And so you had asked us, this is um, Route 4, which is Portland Avenue. Um, we've had um, a number of um, serious accidents uh, at the intersection of um, Bear, Roberts, and Portland Avenue. Also known as Route 4. Um, a little before this, there was a fatality, but it has nothing that really had nothing to do with yeah. traffic flow. It was um, an impaired driver. Um, yeah. Anyways, so uh, for some folks do cite that, um, I know that. Um, there are certain qualifications to get on, on certain lists for certain studies, and then one of those is a fatality. We don't actually, thank goodness, don't have one of those there, uh, but we do have some very, very serious accidents. Um, so for, for me, I would say our, the number one goal is accident mitigation, right? So if it's a, is a traffic calming um, or an extra lane, a turn lane, is it a light, is it don't help me, a rotary, um, which I don't think so, but I'm just, yeah. But you know what, I'm not the civil engineering student, you guys are, and if that's the best case scenario, then, then you should be presenting us with what you all think is the, is the best for, for there. Those of us that have to drive through probably don't want to see it, but anyways, um, from my perspective, that's what I want to see. I want to see something that, have you, have, have you all been over to the site and, yeah. Yeah, okay. You've noticed that the cars drive. It's if posted 50, but they go a lot faster, and they like to pass um, in the middle of the intersection where there's no passing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I live on Bear Road, and when I go to work, instead of taking this route up to Route Four and going left, I go three miles out of my way to avoid this intersection yeah. because cars trying to turn left here, and you've got cars in the breakdown lane all the time. It's, it's, it's very unsafe. Um, I agree. I turn on Roberts Road from Dover when I come home and I turn on Roberts Road. And they just fly past me, yeah. which is, is, I just say, where's the cops? Where's the cops? <laughs> you know, because it just, it's just one after the other. So I think, I mean, hopefully nobody's coming up Bear Road that they didn't see. That's, that's where my biggest concern is. And I understand what your fear is, too. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's... My number one priority for Route 4. Okay. Um, part of the project was a topic called Complete Streets. Mm -hmm. It tries to bring uh, multimodal transportation all together, and uh, it helps to get funding, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why they try to, to push it. Um, is there anything that you guys would like to see as far as pedestrian or bicycle usage, walking? Um, I know it is a fast corridor, so do See, this, yeah, this is part of the problem. A bike lane would be nice, but um, I'm not, and I actually serve on the Complete Streets Coalition, but <laughs> my professional life, so be careful how I say this. I'm not sure it's really going to be safe there, to be honest with you. I, um, if we're talking about Roberts Road down where it becomes Main Street, that's also a state road, that may, might make a lot more sense, but Route 4, I think, is going to be difficult to sell. Um, obviously, there's not room yeah. for a bus lane or anything like that. Um, no, so I, I don't try to think of other conflict street. It's your project, so I don't want to yeah. no. try to think of anything else that might actually call Do you want to? Well, and guys, I'm from the Stratford Regional Planning Commission. I spoke with Kyle on the phone on Friday um, and came up my historical contact with this route and working in Brownsburg. Um, and we spoke, this is, it's kind of a long-term planning right. corridor, and you're kind of at the mercy of the geometry now, which is basically a drag race, yeah. you know, up to and after Roberts Road. Mm -hmm. And so they made it nice and pretty and straight and narrow, and it's great for cars and nothing else. Mm -hmm. It's not good for turning movements, um, it's good for going straight. And so I think, I think you know, Mr. Roll is right that a bike lane would look good, but that's going to result in a fatality. Right. Um, 
because yeah. you've got people passing, and so there are rural complete streets applications, which I'm sure you get. I, I mentioned the, uh, I'm going to forget the title, but it's a USD, USDOT document about sort of rural connectivity through the complete streets framework or lens. Um, and there are some applications uh, within that complete streets idea, but I think there's some some tricky like chicken and egg situation things that have to happen where it's I looked on the map and it's most of the corridor until you get close to Maine is zoned light residential if I'm if I'm correct. Yeah. And it looks like it's maybe a, a few years off from really developing as a residential corridor. Right now it's primarily kind of agricultural and scenic really. Mm -hmm. On our side of on our side of the corridor it's yes. all um it's the vast majority is in conservation too, so it's yeah. not even. And so, yeah. unfortunately, yeah, you're stuck with some of those realities where the, a complete streets approach really shines in kind of an urbanized area, yeah. right? Where you've got you have uh, the need for a multimodal system really driving your your engineering. Um, you like sidewalks, I think we'd all love to see um, yeah. sidewalks from the main border back on that bridge. That crossing the South Berwick that DOT convinced a prior select board a while ago now to take out because they were going to pay for it, yeah. which is a pretty easy solution so situation. They they gave that select board, you know, you can either pay for these or you can just have us take them out. And so they had them take them out. Um, so it might make sense at that end, but this far up, I mean, it's. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, and that's it's definitely more more. while we're here is to get yeah. your input. And if you want, want us to focus on like those areas or. At Roberts and Bear, is that that alignment? Is that is that is the so there's two issues. There's the crossing between Roberts and 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 Bear Road, <coughs> and then there's the traffic from Dover going into South Berwick, Maine, that you know, or, and vice versa. That um, if that, and I don't know, maybe it's just a traffic light. I don't know. I know that's it was not really in vogue anymore. <laughs> yes, but or is it added lanes? I, well, could you reduce the speed limit to 35 half a mile before? You, you try <coughs> to do some kind of engineering right. work in yeah. conjunction with that because it, the, the magic of speeds is that people go the speed that other cars are going, mm -hmm. and because it's a straight and narrow road, 35, right. you know, most people are probably just going to ignore that either purposefully or. Mm -hmm. Because that's right, and the state came in <coughs> and did a study for us. Okay. Like a speed state, a speed study for us. The road used to be 55. Right. Um, it was reduced down to 50. 50. Um, but even that was wasn't easy to accomplish. Mm -hmm. Getting it right. at 50, the state didn't yeah. really. I don't believe. Mostly they still those, believe that it was a 55 was okay. But most of those speed studies result in a recommendation of increasing speed. Right. Because it's People are going a heck of a lot faster than 55. Because yeah. yeah. so it's based on the majority of people that go a reasonable speed, like the 85th percentile for you guys know. So like 85% of people are going to be going a reasonable speed based on the geometry and the limitations of the road um, and the traffic. Pretty, I'm, overall, I would assume it's pretty light traffic. Except at peak times and specific yeah, times of the right, day, right, right. but the majority of people are going to see, oh, nice straight open narrow road, yeah, pretty sure. good visibility for the people on the main mm -hmm. on the main branch, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Not for the people trying to enter that. So you, right. that's the other trick is you've got really low speeds versus really high speeds straight and narrow. Um, so I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on complete streets kind of <coughs> traffic calming with like strategic. Traffic island, you know, median mm -hmm. islands and things like that that make people think, oh, I need to slow down. This right. isn't as straight and narrow as I thought it, or straight and wide as I thought it was going to be. All right. Especially at the crossings where you've got the playhouse and the cross traffic. Um, okay. Oh, of course. Anyway. The roof four before uh, the light at Oak and Route Four. You know where I'm talking about. Okay, yeah. so before that, isn't it 35? Like where Dustin's is? Yeah, yeah. Dustin's is in the ice cream. 35. So, what makes that different than this part? Is it because it's more residential and more businesses um, there? More like commercial, two sidewalks. I don't know if there's two, but yeah, no, it's just I more. Think you have people on the Rollins side, there isn't any sidewalks. Yeah. yeah. So, so when yeah. you're like driving as a as an individual driving down the road, when you see it open up, that's when you pull it up. Okay, right. so 
It's really more about what you have on that road that will help you control what the speed limit is. Yeah. Okay. So All from, right, is it like Taylor Rental to the Rollinsford line is 35, and then when you get into Dover, it's 30. Because yeah. it's, it's so much yeah. more than Yeah, it kind of okay. follows that so gradient of pretty rural, <laughs> When you go in the other way, it, like you said, it, it, it yeah. opens right up when you get past Until you get to the bridge, bed. and then it slows down again, because it goes back again. to residential. Yeah. So maybe it is. Maybe it is the, 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 the traffic calming, the islands. I mean, maybe, I mean, if you drive down Route 101 to go over to Keene, and you're in the town of Peterborough, and you're going down 101, and all of a sudden there is a roundabout yeah. in the middle of Route 101, which is those of us that were driving that road not remembering. Hadn't been there in a long time. It's kind of jarring to come across a rotor in the middle of the, hmm. of the highway. But maybe that is, I mean, a solution. I don't know if DOT would go along with that, but... Um, <laughs> there are parameters where roundabouts work well, and it's probably going to speak to it better than I, but I think they prefer... DOT kind of likes roundabouts. Right. They prefer it where the traffic volumes are equal going in opposite directions. I think they're going to find less... A few recommendations for a roundabout in this case, like at Bear Road, where you've right. got, you know, very low traffic volumes, local traffic versus you know higher volumes of regular yeah, traffic, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. where it just doesn't serve the purpose that a traffic island or a, sure. you know a median right. island could do the same thing without all of the right way right. acquisitions. Um, and roundabouts, interestingly enough, they're they're very good at reducing severe crashes. So people, it takes them a while to get used to them. Right. So instead of right angle crashes, you have a slight uptick in angular sure. low impact crashes as people get used to it. Right. So <coughs> there, is, there is some some merit to people wondering why there are more crashes at a new roundabout, um, but then right. Mm -hmm. Then Peter talking. You know, anyway, that's way into the weeds on roundabouts. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't expect something like that in this, in this case. But that was mainly our overall goal is to hear your thoughts and uh, basically hear your hear the stuff that you don't want to see. Um, yeah. Like if that's what is used as is a a commuting corridor, and you don't want to see the speed limit reduced until that intersection. Yeah, yeah, and and, and so. Route 4 itself is obviously very busy between Maine and, and New Hampshire, but mm -hmm. the, 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 the two side roads are also very busy, especially Bear Road, because that's the cut through to get over to, um, to Route 236, to into LA. Navy and a lot of the Navy Yard traffic goes that way to avoid downtown mm -hmm. <laughs> South Berwick and then trying to, to mm -hmm. turn left onto, onto Route 4. So we do get a lot. In fact, we've had to have it posted to um, heavy commercial vehicles because they were using it and tearing it up for years. Um, yes. Um, I'm sorry, I was writing notes. What, what routes are you talking about? You're getting, like, so Bear Road, and, uh, Bear Road and actually Roberts um, down to where that becomes Main Street on this end um, are both cut through roads yeah. for people. Um, and, and right, so, so people coming from Maine that want to go shopping over in Summers Road, a lot of them are cut through or come up Main Street and then go that way. Um, Folks going to, to work in Portsmouth or beyond are going down there. So they're both um, heavily traveled roads, and people are crossing them at peak times during the day, like you said, you know, mostly in the morning and then the evening commute. But, mm -hmm. And that's constant on <laughs> Route 4. But. Well, that's. Well, I know you guys are talking about speed limits. Touched on it. Lowering the speed limit is really not going to get people to slow down at all. It's, the right. shoulders out there are way too wide. Yes. There's a lot of room, so it just looks like it's completely open. That's why people speed. Mm -hmm. You get to cut in the shoulders a little bit and mm -hmm. maybe decrease the lane width. Right. Well, the, it, right. Slow down. I mean, so for so many years, we, we were expanding roads and expanding roads to make them, uh, I don't know, easier to drive, I guess. And when we did that, you're all been learning, people are going faster and faster and faster, and when you make the road more narrow, people slow down. Silver Street and Dover is a mm -hmm. great example. People used to fly down that road, and then they added a bike lane, and they added, and they made the lane even more and narrow. And well, I don't know about the end, but people would drive much slower on that road now. That's how I go to work. But that's the complete street concept. Correct, so. yes. <laughs> We're not quite there. Maybe down in the village there's the option that we are now, but this, um, this project really, I, I don't think it's going to work.
Is a street light practical? I mean, is that something that you would see that would work in that area? It could. There is a sight line issue, um, whereas you come up onto that crest of the hill, so mm -hmm. we'd have to reduce speed further back to get everybody to notice. Um, but I, I know in like Epping, uh, a couple other places they have, when the, it's about to turn, there's a light down the road that'll flash. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that could work where it, to try to keep speeds up. Mm -hmm. um, but that is our agenda, is to try to figure out. You're going to try to figure that out for us. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so we've given you lots of problems, so we yeah. were hoping you guys would help us figure it out. <laughs> That's what we came for. There That's could be other kind of alert, uh, I don't know what you call them, like you know, warning signals, so maybe not a traffic signal, which has the same problems that uh, they wouldn't want to put in a, a traffic signal um, for the same reasons with the roundabout. And even with a, with a traffic signal, you can run into safety problems where if it's late at night or certain conditions, someone could, could begin with the sightline issue, someone could jump out in the middle of a red, and then you've got someone who thinks they have a green, right. and they're not thinking about anything else because I have a green and no one's going to be coming out because they have red. Um, mm -hmm. So DOT is experimenting with various um, newer technologies, one of which you guys can probably remember the acronym, the, the intersection conflict warning beacons, I think, which are triggered by, instead of just a flashing light, if you put just a flashing light over an intersection, those can become pretty uh, invisible, especially people who travel the route a lot. And so they're playing with ones that are activated by cross traffic. So it isn't flashing until mm. there's a potential conflict. So yeah. people on Route 4, a half a mile ahead of the Bear Road, Roberts Road intersection, could see a flashing a flashing light warning them that there's, there's cross traffic. That something's coming out from Bear or out of Roberts, yes. either way. Yeah, so the, okay. the people coming from Roberts or Bear would trigger this thing and the people on the high oh, speed yes. road would see. So they're testing those in a few locations. Um, not really clear how universal those, be, those, be, those uh, would become in the next few years, mm -hmm. but that's another option to look at. There's a lot of Maine. Mm -hmm. they, they use a lot of similar things like that in Maine, where there'll be a car coming from the right or the left. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. yeah. On, on 202. In, in right. Maine, there's yeah. several of those. Mm -hmm. I don't know how effective they are. I don't know if they're always working. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if they're not they're, maintained, it doesn't yeah. work, right? So I think they're they're testing them because you know if if it stops working, the potential for a crash is pretty catastrophic, right? Mm -hmm. um, so they're linking it. Uh, they've got three testing locations, and they're linking them with the uh, the statewide traffic management center, mm -hmm. so that they can monitor um, if there's a fault, then they can just set it to default flash all the time um, until they fix it. So they're Working out the kinks, you know, okay. the beta testing as they do. So, any other questions for us? So, but <coughs> this is our scope of work and this way where we have to. Perfect. Get together. Yeah. yeah. And I was gonna say, so when do you? Uh, maybe it's in here. When you expect to have a lot of this? Uh, it's in here. So I believe early December with. The have a preliminary design sure. class, and then the next semester is supposed to be a lot of those. So it's a multi-semester yeah. project, obviously, because yeah. it's already um, almost November, and yeah. Yeah. Yes. I haven't been at the university in a long time, as I recall. The semester ends in December, so yep. I don't think you're going to get it done in two, a couple weeks, so I'm going to think about that. So do you need us to sign something? Or no, but it's just okay. All right, so... Um, maybe it's in here, and I haven't actually read it through, so I apologize, but are we going to be getting pure, periodic updates? Yes, yeah, we actually want month, to but... extend an invite. We have our first okay. um, presentation to our project sponsor and our okay. project advisor yeah. on November 28th. It's a Wednesday at 11 a.m. November 28th, 11 a.m., okay. And that'll be at UNH, and we can send a follow-up email. Sure, that'd be great. Sure. Mm -hmm. Pin that down. Okay. And as far as the deliverables, um, we do have a, a book and say PDR to do on before we get out of school for the, okay. for the semester. And then in the spring, we have to present at this, it's called the UFC yeah. sure. yep. Graduate Research. I remember. Yeah. So we have to present at that. So that's pretty Great. much our, our okay. end And we'd be happy to give a presentation to you folks as well. Great. All right.
Yeah. So are there any other questions from the board? Yep. Good, thank you so much. About the final product, mm -hmm. um, would that come with sort of a scope and cost estimates for various alternatives on the project? That's our plan. We're going to select okay. an alternative okay. and then uh, do a, a good cost estimate and try to uh, deliver a P, like a real PDR, something that you guys can use. I think we're going to be in contact with you. Yeah, and as yeah we can tailor it to the regional okay. uh, I get kind of my contact info if you guys want to take a set of those hidden contact me with because I think it sounds like one of the possibilities for this quarter would be to turn it into a tenure plan project to submit mm -hmm. in the next round. That'd be uh, great. Uh, approximately two years from sure. now. Sure. So yeah. if, it, if it's maybe a little too big for an individual highway yeah. safety improvement project or sure. maybe not a TAC project, but mm -hmm. a tenure plan. So. Yeah. Make sure you met with Bill Lambert today and he talked to us about that. Okay. Oh, good. We don't have a. Um, uh, a department that handles this for a very small town, so we appreciate the, uh, the, the help you can give us. We appreciate the, the work. Sure. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys so much. Thank and you. We look forward to hearing from you again.
doesn't look like the bar tube that it looks like it had not been maintained. Yeah. So we need to figure that out also. Okay. Um, and I think we're also waiting to hear back. Uh, do you use the fire pond for like fishing or boating or something like that? I think the, the fire tube uh, like a paddle boat or I have a sprinkler. A sprinkler. Okay. Yeah, just to keep the water moving. And so I, I don't know if Avatar mentioned that. Um, although that's not the that's the, the smaller. The, we're really, we're just waiting on the final number uh, from Avatar so we can and to make the either accept or not accept the recommendation that we don't have the, the full picture yet. I got you. We, I'm looking at Caroline, we've been asking now, we thought we'd have it last week? Well, like a couple of weeks now. So when we don't have it for you tonight, I am really sorry about that. Yeah, no, Chad's embarrassed by that. pretty slow going anyway, all the way through this whole process. So. Yeah. yeah. So I do apologize for that. Okay. So we don't have a final answer for you for tonight. Okay. Um, but whether it's functional or not, I mean, again, it's a fire pond, it's an so, access road. Right, so it's functional in the sense, my understanding is that they can draft out of it, mm -hmm. so they could bring the truck down and run a line. Mm -hmm. I don't know, um, and I don't believe the fire chief knew it last night, last week, rather, when he came and talked to us, how much they could actually draft out of there, how deep it is. I think he was trying to figure that out also. Oh. They have Avatar, if it made a difference in the determination, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Okay. So I think we're... We don't have a complete picture, mm -hmm. and so I, I I can't give you an answer until we actually know that, and I have to apologize for Not that. Idea. They are, in theory, working on it, and the fire chief at least has been out with his crew and looked at it. Yep. So from uh, our perspective, we've done our due diligence, yep. which is now waiting on the recommendation from the quote unquote okay. expert. And, and again, the um, the access, the right of way that we've given to the fire department, that's all in it. Stratford County. I believe so, right? Oh, it's, it's, it's listed on, on your deed, right? So, yeah, on so that um, shouldn't be an issue. I mean, that's, that yeah. should be taken into consideration, I would believe. Okay. And what we've learned, actually, from you asking for this, uh, is that there are others. I'm sure. Other fire ponds that yeah. we may or may not have actually been aware of, or, mm -hmm. or, or whether they're in any kind of working order either. So people yeah. are required to have them on their property. and. Mm -hmm. May not be worth anything to us. The only reason I even uh, caught it was that um, uh, Chad had said it's a really nice piece of property back there. He goes, it's actually considered waterfront. I'm like, well, what? <laughs> yeah. I go waterfront. It's a. I go if anything. Well, you your it front yard gets waterfront too at certain <laughs> yeah. times of year, doesn't it too? <laughs> yes, so it does. yeah. So uh, I said I should get a credit, not I shouldn't be getting taxed on this. Right. Right. Um, and, and there's another the fire pond yeah. further back from you to the. Oh, is it? Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. there's a pond back. I don't know if it's actually classified as a fire pond or not, mm -hmm. but I'm going to figure that out, too. Yeah, but even in the, I mean, I have a, a drawing that shows the access road for the mm -hmm. fire department mm -hmm. all the way down to 435 feet. And it was a requirement when the, yeah. the subdivision went in. Yeah, and I, I actually asked the town, the selectman at the time, I said, yeah. can I actually part of that and use it as part of my driveway? And yeah. Said, sure. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and they, so I guess my last question sure, they is... They did say it, yes, because they can tax you on it. Of course, so. yeah. Well, the, I guess my last question, question is, is once it's determined, uh, the fire pond and the credit yeah. and everything, do we know how far back it goes back to when I stop receiving the actual credit for I the fire pond? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. Because he said he couldn't find it in, for the, at least the last five, six years. Do you know, Caroline, the... Um, my guess is because it's a 2017 abatement, it will go back to 217. So to to um, this, you were originally denied, and it will go back to having been approved at that time. So it will be for the value in 2017. It won't go previous to that. Really? And so for however long this process takes, whatever we owe you will accrue interest. Right. I was going to say this is But even before. But, but it will but, not go before that. Okay. So it's only for this tax year. Okay. I thought I'd hear that answer. And every time they come, it's at least 150000 hundred to $100,000 more incrementally every time I get reassessed. <clears throat> even though I'm losing value on the house over time. Right. Um, so... That's why I'm just wondering. They actually had to come out. I told you this in the last meeting. They came out about six years and did a full yeah. audit after they had already already audited it. Right. And they came down one hundred fifty thousand dollars off my bait. And they, for some reason, they come out and they see that it's a big house. Right. Uh, but when you really break down the house and you look at what what it actually is, it's a three bedroom house, right. but it's massive. Right. And so they way overstated. They had me listed for two swimming pools. And I think that's when they stopped doing the assessment on the pond, too, the fire pond. Oh. Was when they
they did that major abatement back. Right. And they were coming out of a swimming pool? Two swimming pools, I think, listed as. And, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And all the notes and, and everything. So, um, again, it's been this ongoing is, um, from Avatar. This is why, um, at least recently, we've been telling people. We, we had, so last year, the year before last, we had an informational session. We had Avatar come to explain people to people what the reevaluation means and what it should mean to their property. Mm -hmm. And we try to encourage people to actually let Avatar onto their properties and actually go in and see what their homes are because mm -hmm. if they just have to guess by what it looks like from the outside, right? they usually guess higher. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and I told Chad that too. I said, when he first when I first got the, uh, the assessment, I said, will you come look at this? I, I go, you can't do a drive-by at this house. And you need to come in. It's this. worth almost a well, million dollars. I said, you, you have to come in on an, on an assessment like this. And he wouldn't didn't come in and wouldn't spend the time. The other auditor came back when they saw the when I told them it was way overestimated. But and you did I, get someone to come back and take go in and take a look. And I did. They came okay. through all of the structures I have okay. there, and they, and they gave me I thought was a fair assessment at the time. Right. And um, and we were good. But right. I, again, I think that's might have been when they forgot about the fire farm. Um, but either way, um, I want them to come in every time. Mm -hmm. You know, and let me know. I again, I want them to see and understand the wetlands that are around the lot and everything that surrounds the property because, again, driving by it looks like it's worth a lot. And a lot of people say that, but when you really break it down, and yeah, I do this for a living, so I, I know what things are worth. And uh, so, again, I, uh, I just want to make sure that I get the credit mm -hmm. when we get the reassessment, but if it's only back to 2017. When, yeah, well, we're, we, we, uh, we haven't made a determination as to whether or not we're going to accept their recommendation, and we, we simply because we haven't gotten all the information, yet. Mm -hmm. so we will when we when we get that, we will we will look at it and then make that decision then. But yeah, so, so the, the officially at the moment, the select board's um, answer is that we have denied based on their information mm -hmm. um, until we get the actual recommendation. Again, they, they tell me it's coming mm -hmm. that they're going to recommend that you get X amount of dollars for an abatement based on the fire pond and unspecified things that he missed he thought, <laughs> the first time he, he thought my garages were nice. He said they look like they could be apartments. And I said, well... <laughs> Come on in, there's nothing, no one living in here. Yeah, I said there's a <laughs> boat, there's a 24-foot boat and a tractor in one. And right. then, you know, it's my, myself and my wife living in the property. So. Right. So, I'm assuming some of that's based on what you just told me, but again, I haven't seen it, so I, I can't. Mm -hmm. So we haven't actually taken a position, taken a position on it yet. I guess. So I so, don't want to mislead you either to say no, 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 it's no, coming right now because we haven't actually voted yet. So. And one thing I did hear though the first time I came in was that when you guys get the recommendations initially from them, mm -hmm. you go with their recommendation unless somebody unless we it. for some reason know mm -hmm. a reason why we shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're I'm trying to think of um, if there was a time this year, maybe the last year, I can't remember the specifics, but I know there was an abatement request that we received and they either denied it, recommended that we deny it outright or make a, an adjustment that we thought was inadequate and we adjusted it. Mm -hmm. So it does happen. I mean, so we, we do try to do our due diligence, but mm -hmm. for the most part, I don't know, I'm not an expert on every single piece of property in town. I don't. I know some people think I drive around looking for things, but I don't. None of us really do. So, but we typically take their recommendations because we've hired them as our experts. But um, if for some reason we know of a reason why we shouldn't do them, the board, and not just this board, but previous boards, will make adjustments. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think about that. Do you remember Caroline with the house was? I don't. We did it not. No, I don't think it was this year. I don't know last year. But so we do do it. Yeah. So. Well, I just it seems like this happens every three years. I am here, like at least at least every six years I'm here. Uh, I was going to say probably every five, six years, because we do it every four. Yeah. It's reevaluations every five years. Yeah, so. and I'm usually here, but I'm, I'm sure there's other people in the same thing where they're coming mm -hmm. in. When you come, when you see that happen every six years, that they're inflating your house by $100,000, more than what they're saying it was worth. I don't know if we get anyone that is, quote unquote, inflated that high. <laughs> I don't know if we go, but we do have folks that come in. Mm -hmm. There are certain neighborhoods that come in. Um, um, yours is not typically one of them. Um, I grew up in that neighborhood, um, on the other end of the street. But um, mm -hmm. on the other side of town, by the river, there are neighborhoods where they do feel that they are 
unjustly um, operate at a higher rate. Um, and then just individual people that come in. Sure. I mean, they're, uh, much like yourself, they have property maybe that's large, but once the assessors come in and they take a look at it, they make it a different outcome. And that's why we truly do mm -hmm. encourage people to come and take a look and have the assessor go in and look because if they think they see from, because they can look in your windows, if they think you have got marble countertops, All right. and really they're not, they're formica, and the ones that I have in my house look like they're granite, but they ain't granite. granite same one. They are yeah. speckled formica countertops, mm -hmm. that they look from the window, I bet they do look like it. Mm -hmm. um, they would say, you've got, or tile, I mean the yeah. same thing, I mean I've got linoleum in the bathroom, but if you look from the window it looks like real tile, mm -hmm. it's not. Yeah. So I would be assessed at a higher rate. I guess the next time next time we do this, I'll just have to come right down it before just say I request them to come. Well they usually send a letter and there's a number on it that you call and you can set up an appointment with them and they, they handle it for us. Okay. So you don't have to do that. Okay. Um, I will say though that um, when those letters go out is also their busiest time of year, so mm -hmm. you're gonna have to leave a message and do they have more than one guy? They do. I don't know how many people work. Okay. I don't know. I, and I don't know if they had more people on. We have, um, this board hasn't talked to one. The previous boards have said, you know, do we want to stay with this company? Mm -hmm. And we will talk to other towns that have other companies and they will say that they're not satisfied with their services. So, mm -hmm. have we done a deep dive to actually go to an RFP to see if there's a better company? We have not. Um, but, Anecdotal evidence means anything from other select boards. No one seems to be happy with the, uh, the assessors that they hire. Yeah. Unless you uh, you get um, a town staff hired specifically to do it. I see. I, I don't think people would be happy with that either. So. Yeah. All right. But we um, we are in a contract now for another four years to do another reevaluation. Three years, I think. Four years to do another reevaluation. Um, but at that time, the select board should probably look at maybe doing an RFP and um, mm -hmm. finding another assessing company, yeah. if it's possible. The other thing, though, <laughs> take a lot of your time with this, but no, we have um, we we use their software, mm -hmm. so all of our information is already in their system. So one of the disadvantages we're told I don't know yet because we haven't actually gone out with an RFP. Mm -hmm. We're told that it would be cost prohibitive to go with another company because they have all of our, our information already. Really? It, it's something we've been told. Until we do an RFP, I, I don't know if it's actually true or not, but it's, it's one of the roadblocks that people throw up yeah. how much more expensive the startup cost would be. Well, I I'm assuming if there was a startup cost when we went with Avatar, mm -hmm. <laughs> they didn't just miraculously get our information for nothing, so, or vice versa. So, uh, but. Anyway, so there's, I think there's a whole host of things we would need to consider if we were going to change companies. And unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess, yeah, on your perspective, we're in a contract until the next reevaluation, which is in four years, I think. So it'd be a shame if they held that as proprietary. Uh, no, 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 I don't want to misspeak. I don't think that's it. I think it's it's um, it's just the collecting of the data and the startup cost. I think is really what it was. It's not that it's proprietary because it's our information. Mm -hmm. It's not that, it's just, um, again, I, until we do an RFP, who we'll really knows because guess, and we don't want to put any we're just told yeah. that that's what it would be by by other companies or other towns that use other companies. Okay. I don't know if that's true or not, so I'm yeah. always going to share that. No, uh, no, it's, it's always I don't try to, I don't want to spread rumors, so yeah, I don't know. Hey, you won't know until you look at me. Exactly. Anyway, so. But I know it's something that... Um, is on our radar. Now, I don't, can't guarantee that the three of us will be sitting here when it's time again either, but hopefully the next board will, will be thinking about it. So. Okay. All right, so I, I'm sorry you came right. down for... No, that's okay. I just uh, wanted to kind of thing, but get a feel for how it was going. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I would have expected an answer um, earlier in the to be, mm -hmm. last week, rather, to be honest with you. Okay. We have not gotten it, so I apologize for that. Yeah. We'll follow up again. Yeah. Okay. Tomorrow morning, maybe? Yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. For All right. Thank you. Guys. Thanks for having us. Have a nice time. Okay. So, Department of Business, the Junkyard Public Hearings on beyond the 5th. There's no change there. Um, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Maybe we'll change the, the um, agenda so it says that for next time. Uh,
um, which um, is next Monday, isn't it? Yep. So uh, the police chief said he would be here to um, provide information, and we'll have an officer there um, in general, just in case for crowd control or. Well, <laughs> we have. There have been issues um, um, with um, family members uh, of the owner of the junkyard, I guess, and, and some of the abutters uh, that have uh, ended up in physical altercation. So, if any of those people are here, I, I don't want to. I'd rather have the police here just in case. So I don't want to replay. Um, all right. So, fire upon accessibility. Um, um, the accessibility is accessible. That's not the issue. As Mr. Lund just said, it's paved. You can drive in there. And um, Mark said that we could, you could draft out of there, but the pipe is not connected. So, is it on here later on? If it's not, yeah, it is. It's uh, a, there's the actual abatement. Well, 40 right? my update is what I just actually just told Mr. Lund. Is there is no, we're waiting on to hear from Avatar, and it's a little frustrating, probably more so for him. But, um, we don't have an answer yet. Um, Did we have an answer of the ones who as well have fire uh, ponds and are they getting abatements? I, I asked that as well. I haven't heard. We haven't heard back. I know. I asked that too this morning. Because I don't know necessarily if they're called a fire pond as much as they have a pond. Yeah. Right. And a fire department will use anything that they can get their hands on if they're near right. a water source and they will right. just take it. So <laughs> I mean, to be honest with you, to protect the, the building, yeah. they will put a, a, you know something in the pond. So, so Mark was going to check the standpipe, or the crew um, at, the, at the fire department, I don't know if it's actually Mark, was going to go down and check the standpipe down at the mill to make sure it's still operational. I don't know. I haven't heard back yet. And he's going to check the one on Rollins Road by uh, the White House. White House, yeah. Um, I don't know. But I'm guessing that, um, I don't know, the time that I've been sitting here, one of the chairs, we've never gotten a bill or talked about maintenance on it. So I don't know if they were ever maintained previously. I have no idea. Carolyn, do you remember seeing any bills coming through for maintenance? I need it. So, which is going to be a larger conversation. And um, it may raise, I, I don't know how much it would cost, but I want to talk to Mark about it some more. It, could be a capital expense, I don't know, but if we have these, do we want to maintain them? Do we need to maintain them? Can they just draft? Does he have to have these uh, pipes? Um, is it just the one down at the mill that's the, the biggest priority that we need to make sure it needs to be fixed? Is it a couple hundred dollar fix? Is it a several thousand dollar fix? I have no idea. So I want to get a little more information from Mark, but um, the first thing we're we're not done with the budget yet, so um, we, we may be talking about fixing the stand pipes in this year's budget yeah. or next year's. Is he here? Yeah, I can oh, hear him. All right, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to um, give you my quick update on the others and let Mark come in and tell his story for himself. Um, highway, um, George, sorry, a moment there. George is on vacation until um, the second. Um, I've reached out to Aaron and Oil Tanner. He is going to coordinate with George when he gets back to set up uh, a time to go down and look a meeting to go down and look at the um, culvert down on Sligo, the large one that, that has the Jersey barriers. Um, cost projections at the transfer station. Um, it's like volunteer. Uh, I believe everyone was CC'd on the email. Uh, if I was, I'm sure everyone else was. Uh, the um, chair of the budget committee have volunteered to do um, um, cost um, benefit uh, projection analysis of um, of the compactors uh, or the use of compactors down at the right at the, the, baler. the baler rather sorry the compactors the baler um, um, on recycling so um, to which I say thank you. I mean, was there any well, objection to him doing that? Well, he was also saying that he's going to be doing, looking at all of the other projects that were previously farmed out or doing in house this year. Yes, thank you. Savings, yep. Anything that the transfer, I mean, the highway department highway, is doing yeah. that is because we, at the budget meeting, we were asked why we gave um, compensation, additional compensation this year. And one of the reasons I gave them was because of all the in house work that we saved money on. And that let John come back to me and said, you know, I would be happy to 
do up something, a presentation of some sort, because that's what he does for a living, and volunteer to do it, and um, give it to us, and so we can show all of the stuff that they're doing that is uh, saving us money. So, um, yeah. So there was, was an no objection idea. to that, having them do that? No, no, no. no. Uh, I can tell you that before we had George and Ed, um, we, um, we used to have to contract out a number of um, a number of jobs, whether it's ditch work or what I would call minor. What, what am I to say? Minor. I don't even know how to do any of it. So, but we're quote unquote minor covert work, you know, um, um, things of that nature. Uh, that George, uh, with the assistance of Ed. Um, has been able to accomplish for the town. It's been much cheaper than having to subcontract out at between three to five thousand dollars. Just fixing some of the structures, the um, um, the, um, the drains, uh, the, the storm drains. Um, the previous road agent did what he could, but when it's you and if you can get someone else, it's not necessarily safe to do some of that work. Right. So he would do what he could, but had to subcontract out a lot of that work. Um, yeah, because in all fairness, so, he didn't have. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so yeah. There, there's, a, there's, there's, a, there's a combination of reasons as to why yeah, <laughs> things may or may not have gotten done mm -hmm. um, the way they are getting done now. Was my mm -hmm. point. So, um, I, if he can show us, you know, the, you know, some of that evidence, I think that would be very helpful. So, so um, do you? Uh, are you going to contact uh, George and just tell him to if John? Yep, I'll talk send to him them that yep. they'll give him the blessing for him to talk yep. to them. Yep, for sure. What I will do is I will forward uh, George the email from um, John. from uh, from John and, okay. and tell him that the the board uh, would like him to work with him to get him the information so um, so he can, so folks can see how we've been able to um, how George not us how George has been able to mm -hmm. and Ed have been able to uh, save us on the other side yes. uh, so we don't have to subcontract out some of the work. Okay, um, uh, Chief, why don't you come on up? Come on down, he says. You just missed, uh... No, I had a discussion with Mr. Lavin. Oh, outside? Uh, <laughs> he was here and it would have been, um, instead of me trying to hopefully, uh, trying to make up some, a, a, a cogent answer. Um, so the fire pond down uh, at his residence, the standpipe isn't working. At this time, right? How much do you estimate, if you can, it would cost to fix it? If you can't, that's okay. My my suggestion would be don't fix it. Okay. All right. Put it in the wood. Okay. So can, can you explain what is it? It's a pipe that goes to the bottom of the pond. Yeah. So okay. My other question I just said was, I wonder how much volume. Is yeah. I mentioned that to him. Yeah. That we didn't know that. He said it was so. nine feet deep. Hydrologists or any of those water gurus, and you could probably get an exact gallonage to what's in there mm -hmm. under the right conditions. Right. But he told me that the easement or the road when that came down stopped at that standpipe. Okay. But I asked him, I says, you know, why did they ever let you build two buildings on top of the standpipe or the water or the pipe running through it? Well, I know it's really deep. I, go, I hope they actually is, or you would have been digging it up to put the plumbing together. Basically, he's got it paved all the way down. He has a garage that sits here. Okay. Standpipe is here. Yeah. There's a garage that sits here. Okay. So you can buy the standpipe. You come through here. You make another swing. There's a smaller building here, and there's a pond. Okay. So you go boop, boop, boop to get to this point. And when I first went looking for it, we walked all the way around the pond because typically these things are right next to it. This thing is easily 40 feet remote from the pond. So, so if it's working, is? yeah. It is quite a ways away from the pond. Right. So that also means that you would need a piece of fire equipment that has the ability to be tested and can draw water that distance. That takes a lot of work for the yeah. fire truck to move it. If it's right next to it, it's a lot easier to lift. Gotcha. Because under the perfect atmospheric conditions, you can only lift water with a fire truck 32 feet. And we're right at the very end of that. Okay. Okay? And that's that's the drafting, you know, the reliability of the fire truck. We could do it with engine two, it's brand new. We could probably draw it 50 feet. Until it gets old and things fall apart. But, uh, I started looking at it. 
just makes no sense. If we go down there and either one of these two garages are burning, we couldn't even use it because it's right where the, we, too, we couldn't get to that point to, right. to utilize that. So I talked to John, and to answer your question, if it goes that far and it's something that needs to be done, you're going to be better off replacing it. Okay. A replacement on one of those kind of things is roughly in the range of $4,000. Okay. Okay, and that would be um, digging it in, sinking out the buoy out in the middle of the pond, arranging some sort of platform so the fire department could look into it, keeping it clear. And he even said out there when I suggested him that, he says, well, the easement stops with pipe, but he would be willing to go to Stratford County and continue that easement down to the pond if a new one was placed down there. So he's already willing to do some of that on his part. So you think about approximately four thousand dollars to replace that? Okay, so that's you know, because we've said this. Right, you're going to have to. I have, I have a whole. We did a little research. So the fire pond, I think the intention was for it to address the new development that was going in, not just this house. Correct. If I hear you correctly, that I mean that is not going to address the whole development. No. It's nine feet of water. I no. mean, and no. how how big is it? It's not that big around. I, I mean, no, so it's really not. That's why I was wondering how invest, much water do I have in there? Yeah, but to invest like four grand to put a new yeah. pipe in there, isn't it better? And you're the chief, and I'm not going to know your job. But isn't it better to call in tankers versus We're trying to draft out of yeah, oh, nine no, feet of water? Even, even if that even if that thing had a hundred thousand gallons of water in it, I'm still calling tankers in it right. always. Yeah. But if that's limited, and we can only get five truckloads of water out of it. Replacing it still makes sense. It does. Because you're going to get trucks in and be trucking water all over. I have to wait for a tanker truck to come from Elliott, mm -hmm. Durham, Rochester. Dover doesn't have one. Mm -hmm. South Berwick. So we're talking travel times. Mm -hmm. But we can have a truck in there, be flowing off of that, or, or take our tanker, dump it, and be back there before a lot of these other people are arriving. So the initial setup and use of that is still makes sense. Mm -hmm. So you'd be able to get 9,000 gallons, three loads out of there, boom, 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 by the time everybody else is arrived. Can you draft out of that? Yes. We did that the night when we mm -hmm. found that the pipe was inoperable. Right. We made sure we get the truck down into that point, being very careful not to destroy any sure. of stuff, because the sure. you know, truck weighs 42,000 pounds and it wouldn't break its driveway. Right. We can't. The only issue that we have is a new engine came equipped with, and that's a standard on most new fire trucks, it comes with two lengths, 10 foot lengths of hard suction line. Which yeah. is what you need. Yeah. You need three to get into this pond. Okay. Because it has to be a hard sleeve, because if it's a soft sleeve, obviously it crushes, we can't draw. Mm -hmm. So we need to have a hard sleeve, and that's yeah. what we can. It's no big deal because we get one off the other truck. So if we're going to set up something like that, it's not going to run the equipment, we're just going to mix and match it initially. So, but if there was another one right next to that pond, we wouldn't have that issue. You so pull the fire truck up, you put one, one length on, and you're going into work. So that's. Just one because that pond is spring fed, so you should be able to hook into something that that's already feeding that pond. Is that what you're saying? Outside yep. the pond, you're gonna put a standpipe. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, be more, you know, because more closer to the, the pond. The circumference of the pond, the spring fed is over here, and his driveway is on this side. Yeah. Here, so he would need to put something over here on that side. And it's 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 well maintained. It's paved. It's wide open. I had to talk to him. I said, "Well, I hit it with my plow." And this is that. Do you plow down at the pond when you're cleaning out the yard? Yeah, sometimes I do. Well, if this moves further, take some steps. That's we're going to eliminate doing that. Because mm -hmm. it's our access. Mm -hmm. So he's already kind of getting an idea from what you guys had a discussion, and I've talked to his wife numerous times on this already. They kind of have an idea what their responsibility needs to be if this goes forward. So there's that. Mm -hmm. There's one down the mills, right? Yep. Do you know if that's operational? Uh, not well, Last time I talked to Mr. Pellerin, no. That was something that was in the CIP. Remember they were talking about the sinkhole or something down there when yeah. Suzanne sat in your seat? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was something, it was one of the three projects with the uh, culverts that were sinking and falling apart. That was like one, two, that was like the third one to get that repaired. Brian mm -hmm. Peller knows that there's been issues with that. And uh, I don't know where it has gone. If it's repaired. So the, there was the um, repairs that were done there was the outfall, right? It wasn't the, um, it wasn't just the standpipe. No. But I thought that was going to be incorporated with it, or at least Mr. Peller knew about it. That's something, if you already got it dug up and wide open and you're fixing stuff, all right, that's right. Mm -hmm. And then probably save you money on that up. Put some more PVC in And that one right there would be perfect because. But we've finished. You've never run out of water. Right, Caroline? We finished all that work down there. 
Yeah. It's not an ongoing thing. It was something it was, that was there from the other projects yeah. previous. There was an uh, issue with, uh, yeah, where the, um, the, uh, the drain, the outfall, the um, pipe had become separated and caused a sinkhole. So that became a priority. Um, right. And that was fixed uh, last year. And that was on the side, right, right where the standpipe is, because the sewer plant is here, the lower mill is here, and that standpipe sits right there and goes directly into the river. Right. And it's a PVC standpipe, so it's not got very expensive parts with metal and this and that. Right. Side. And that goes down, runs down the inside of the wall, the, the block wall that's right. there, and it runs out into the river. You'd never run out of water. So how much do you think it would cost you to repair that? That one I don't have any idea, really, on the plastic and PVC, but it wouldn't be any more than what the other ones. I think that's a ballpark figure for what you would be looking at for any of this stuff. Okay. I don't think it's over the So, top. and now there's it's another one on price. Rollins Road by Jay Whitehouse. Yes, stuff. there's one that's there. That one I do know um, years and years ago when I first started with the fire department, we used to go down there and pump through it. This is what you do initially make sure that the outflow, the, the, the uh, basket at the end is not full and it right. drop back out. That's a small pond also. Right. I don't think there's a huge amount of water in that one. If we were going to do anything down there, it would be over at Janko. The Janko does a huge pond. You can't right. see it. You can't see it. That's right. But that's got an enormous amount of water. And it has a stamp pipe. So that would be a... So we use that all the That's time. what you would use. Yeah. But the other thing with Jenko, if people don't realize, it has a dedicated water supply from a line that comes from somewhere. Mm -hmm. The summer's mm -hmm. worth There's three hydrants in their lot. So if we have any issue, we're yeah. going to go right, yeah. to, right to the plug there. And if we needed to use that pond, we, we would. But uh, okay. that, of so all the ponds that we're talking about, that is the biggest one with the largest supply. Is right there. Mm -hmm. And that one's all set. That, that one's fine. We were down there just a couple of months ago yeah. making sure that yeah. one works. Raleigh Janillo's, you know, yeah. owner of Janko, yeah. as honest all the time. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Nice. We go down a couple of times, we use it as a training opportunity. Mm -hmm. That's right. For some pumping things for some. some so other. if you had to prioritize between, you know, they all probably need to be fixed, uh, but what would you say was the number one? The mill. The mill needs to be fixed first. Yeah. I don't disagree with you. But you know, the other thing is we've had a discussion and I talked to some of the other officers of the fire department. And this kind of stems also to the ISO things that we've been running through. Because I don't know if you've got a report from those people yet. I think it's still waiting for the water and sewer guy to get a hold of them. Because they're all done with the fire department side of things. I had a meeting with Anthony Crescente about a month ago on our fire department and water supply system and whatnot on our end of it to get the ISO stuff squared away. He's waiting on him to finish his report. Okay. So I'm sure that'll be coming towards you pretty quick. Okay. One of the biggest components on within that um, report is the town's water supply and what they have available. Okay. Upgrade to the tank and some of those systems that were changed from the old tank that we had. The capacity is better. The piping is better. Um, it's going to show some improvement. Having a tank truck in the fire department and some of the newer equipment we have is a big boost from what when this was done well, periodically 25 years ago. Um, the other suggestion we have when we're talking about a fire department with CIP, if this was to go to a CIP thing and the money needed to put in to um, upgrade these, mm -hmm. it should be a consideration to add to the stamp pipe. Okay. One by the boat ramp at the Legion, mm -hmm. and one by the upper end, uh, uh, by the railroad crossing. Right up right there, the other boat ramp above the dam. You know, uh, the yeah. Scotland Road that runs yeah. off oh, down there where Raper Bend Oh, 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 under the bridge. Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Whatever that, by Centennial Park. Yep, yep, yep. Other side, right there by the inflow for the hydro plant. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Those two places, if the town is looking to do this, and this again would reflect on, would help on ISO readings, because if there was two of them on either end of that, those are places where there's going to be water available 100% of the time, mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. Even in the middle of February, when always all the ponds are frozen. We can put people in there. The fire department still will. Part of our protocols, they will fire in the downtown area. This, we still need to put fire trucks at the Legion, at the boat ramp, to draw water out as a secondary supply. The town's water system, we can drain that in a matter of one or two hours if we're having a large fire right. in town. So our contingency, boat ramp, in or up by the hydro plant, above a by Centennial Park. That is a given. That is what we need to expedite that and make it easier for the fire department. And it would be a mutual aid company doing that. Trevor would not be our equipment. Right. The pipe's all right there. The truck pulls in, he hooks in, he starts a draft, and then the tanker trucks just come to him. He's the water point, mm -hmm. and he just feeds it. It just expedites the whole process. Yes, Dan.
dam pipe replaces a, replaces a hydrant, in other words. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't use the word replaces. Well, well it when you don't it, have it, one it there. It. Yeah. it augments the whole system. And that does not just have to be for, you know, the downtown has protection. But if you have that system, it's so quick. If we had a fire at the upper end of Sligo Road, and you head down to Brookmore Farm, mm -hmm. if you had one of those sit right there to lead it, you could use what hydrants are out there, which ain't much, but you could turn that turnaround so much quicker. Mm -hmm. Because all the stuff on water delivery when it comes to tankers and rural water supply, which is all that other half of town, is all based on the supply and the equipment, how many trucks you have. To put a fire out, we need a certain amount of fire float over come BTUs. And if we're doing that on a rural water supply with tankers, there's formulas that I, this is how big the house is, this is how much volume of fire that I have. I need this much BTUs to overcome, so I need two, six tank trucks. And then you would be able to make a circle from the magnet, just plugging that, just plugging in the numbers. And if we have these access points available to us, it's so what about um, on uh, River Road, down uh, that end of town, where there's access to the river? That's a long way away from the river. I was just working down there across from John O'Day's house. Everybody know where Dr. Mm -hmm. O'Day lives together? Yeah. Swiss chalet kind of house, yeah. courts right across the street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I walked over there the other day. Is there access to the river? Right you can see the river, but it's a long way. Okay. It's, so it's, it's also a down. tidal river, and it's, yeah. it's, it's a long way down. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think we would have the ability so to draw water. water from there. Because, okay. like I said, perfect condition to spread to okay. inches or feet of lift is all that can do. That's way too far. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we went through it, and I started thinking of all the places in town where I knew there was water. Right. So places we could get to stuff that would be adequate. Those are the ones we came up with. We were also trying to make something on like Old Dominion because you have yeah. fresh, fresh, creek fresh creek water. water. It's, it's, if it's August, yeah, I got any water. I said there's certain times of year that fresh creek isn't so fresh. There's not much there. But the other problem, the other thing with that is go to Taylor Randall, doors are in the dead line. Right. Down, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's where we get our water from. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So that was something. All right. So there are there's two. We're going to exclude the mill for a moment. So if that's a priority, then that would mean somewhere we need to find approximately four thousand dollars somewhere. I would use that as a number. But is that is that the town's response? That that one I don't right know. There? If there's a right of way, if there's an easement, then that I, mean, I, I, I do not problem with anyway, it. But I do know that was discussed in the past. The um, I don't know about the mills, but I the um, Moses Carr in Rollins Road by the White House, as I would assume is the town's responsibility. I can't imagine. The, the landowners have granted an easement for the town to cross to, to have it, mm -hmm. but they're not going to maintain it. Um, the mill, I don't know, because it, it's, it could be the same situation. I don't know. Yeah. I don't want to. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of questions there. I don't think it's really going to answer. Yeah, I, I guess the only thing I can say is I know when we go down there for all the incidents that we have, there's a lot of fire alarms and issues that we sure. do down there. Mr. Peller is very supportive, very easy to deal with. Sure. But if this was something that you know the town had to undertake a portion of, I could see him being more and more. Well, I mean, I don't know if it's affecting his yeah. building, you know. I right. Mean, yeah. yeah. Bingo. I mean, I'm well, sure. there's sure he's got the largest piece of real estate down there, but there's uh, an awful lot of houses in the village that yes, he would be pulling water there, for there because those hydrants, you say, aren't going to. Last the forever. floor. It's a constant battle. They put that new tank in, and what is it, a hundred thousand gallon tank up on the hill? It only keeps it at sixty to seventy percent full. Right. And if we start flowing water on a large complex downtown, we could be flowing twenty thousand gallons a minute. How long is a tank gonna last? Yeah. Not even five minutes. I was gonna say you're <laughs> you're out of luck in a couple of minutes. You can't rely on the water system other than small. Quick attack, hit it, and suppress the fire. If this is something that advances ahead of us, uh, late at night, nobody sees it for a while, we get multiple rooms or a floor going, um, that's when all our contingency plans come in. We're going to tag the hydrant right there, we're going to use that water initially, but all these other things are going to be played, put into play in order to suppress it. So let's, I, I don't want to, we, we, we need to fix one of the mill. I don't think there's an argument. So let me just, devil's advocate. The lower mill's on fire. Can you access the standpipe? Yes. You still can? Yes. Okay. When we're doing
open mill fires in anybody's community anywhere in the U.S. of A., there's a lot of rules that you have to adhere to, and a lot of it is because of the height of the mill. Mm -hmm. In the old days, those mills were made to fall down. I was going to say, this one was made to fall in, I think. So Correct. If it does, but it works. I mean, it's And what that is, is that really you know, now you can go buy mills where they've had fires, and the, the hull of it is still standing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have a, a, a construction feature which is called a fire cut. Mm -hmm. All the floors for each one of those buildings have a big notch that is built into the side of the brick facing of the building. Okay. So when they become fully well and those walls, let the floors start to let go, yeah. the outward pressure is not there. They're made to pancake and fall inside. Right. So all that stuff don't fall down. Right. Years and years ago when fire departments were in, they had you know, pumper trucks and you know, bucket brigades. They used to kill an awful lot of fire because the building fell on them. Right. So that was a building construction change that they did in the 1900s. That mill has fire cut. So it becomes an issue, everything's supposed to fall in. Right. We have no access to the back side of the building. Okay. Can't get right. to it because of the river. We can get to the side where we come around from South Carolina. Right. And where that standpipe is located on either mill or the lower mill, it's far enough away that we're outside of the collapse zone. Okay. Which is very, very important. Yep. You have to go there, it's going to be ladder trucks on the corners because that's where you place them. Because if, they did, if the walls did fall, the corners are always standing. It tends to be the middle part. That is located remotely way over and close to the gates to the uh, sewer plant. Gotcha. So you could put a truck in there and have a field day. Well, let's hope we never have to, Me to put any of these plans in practice. But, Me too. but okay, so is, is there one on the upper, is it, there's only one on the lower mill, there isn't one up at the upper mill, right? You know, so years and years ago, there used to be two fire pumps inside the basement of the large mill. Okay. Mm. They drew water right out of the river. It directly flowed into yard hydrants, okay. and it had another pipe which filled the tank, which is up the end of the railroad aft. That one that's right there by yep. the old balloon building. Yep. Mm -hmm. Biggest mistake that they ever happened, and I don't know who was involved, because they took those out. Those to this day could still be in service, and still could have been a, a mm -hmm. big asset, but they get taken out. Years and years and years. Probably one for any of us were around, but mm -hmm. I do know a little bit of the history mm -hmm. and stuff. <laughs> But All right. Sprinkler so system in the upper mill works pretty good because. Well, you've had some minor. Ah, uh, yes, we've yes, had. I know, yeah. Well, we had, and you know why it was minor? Because of the sprinklers, right? Yeah. We had one. Yeah. Two years ago. Was it a ranch or something, right? Or the yeah. furniture. It was yeah. in a furniture uh, fence building cabinetry place, and yeah. he used old rags from stained furniture, and he had a large fire in a corner that had expanded outside of the uh, tray and the, and the mobile little. Unit that he had, and he got into some of his stack wood, and the, and the sprinkler system held it in place until we could get them to fire extinction. Yeah. But, and, and there was one other incident, same kind of thing. So it works. But we're lucky on that. Yeah. It's not the way you want to test it. No, I know. Yeah. But. So should we recommend Mark to investigate the cost of putting standpipes in and put it into CRP? Is yeah. That I, was something gonna, that you I, I was going to talk, yeah, make a suggestion. So. I like think we want to put one Wherever over by the Legion. Legion. Well, you've, you've talked about two new ones, and you've got two existing that need to be. So if we just say four, that's what, 16,000. That would certainly qualify for the CIP. Mm -hmm. um, or, or 20 if you include the the um, one I'm hearing I'll, I'll, the I'll, I'll, I'll I'll priority, Wherever you so think well, one I'll, will I'll, assist. I'll do, some, I'll do some work and. We already did some discussion on this tonight between myself, Kevin, and some of the other officers. And we, Kevin's actually done some work, and he's, he's found some numbers and kind of fits into the design for what we would need. It was uh, right. the, the, the the four we were just talking about may not it may not happen for this year for the CIP, but it should be on the schedule. Well, that's what I'm saying for the but schedule. For it won't sure. be for this year. Right. But maybe. But it sounds like one, the um, the one for the lower mill. Sounds like it really needs to be a priority for that end of town. Yes. So we may need to try to find four thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah. Again, again that one, I, I'm talking a like completely new installation. That one has existing parts and components to it. All right. But again, I, I don't know the particulars of it, other than the fact that it's there and it's inoperable at the moment. So maybe Mr. Peller and what type of who would install something like this? Yeah. Um, a lot of times what you do is you go to a fire sprinkler company that services, you know, okay. like down sure. top of the mill. Yeah. They're the ones that would, uh, you can contract with them. Okay. And whether 
it's through them directly, or if they have they another sub that takes yeah. care of it, but they would be the overseer of it. Gotcha. Because you need something like that. Something so it's the same type of system, that the same type of people. Okay. You want somebody that that's you know, qualified. Well, I do, yes. Does all. <laughs> yes. I mean, you can go get you know Joe Backhoe to come over there and throw some pipes in the water and call it a stamp pipe. They want somebody that's reputable, so yeah. you can go to yeah. an issue. So that would be the way that I would go for something like that. And then, then they inspect them every so many years or every year or something just to make sure that they're functional, or just you trying them out to make it. If this was somebody at the time decided to do, say, the Legion uh, or at the upper ramp, mm -hmm. that's on the fire department. Would that's right. Question. Question. Yeah. Yeah. So our, our ability to do that. And like I said, we used to do the one on, on, uh, on Rollinsville. We did that for a few years and then it just kind of went away. But that's something that, you know, on an annual basis or probably biannually, go up there and, and clean out whatever brush needs to be cleaned up, make sure it's serviceable, flow water out through it, and then bring it back in and make sure things are ready to go. Because there's really no maintenance to them other than just flow a little water here and there and keep them clean. What about, it a little bit, something like that. What about in the winter, though? Do you have to put any freeze in there or anything so it doesn't? Because there's no water in there until you start drafting or whatever you For the most part, you can, you can oh, you get do. it that way. Okay. They have a clapper valve in it. And Started, you you started creating the draft to open that. Mm -hmm. That's that's you can design it that way. Okay. Yeah. Any free side of it, I mean, you just couldn't go dump it in there anyway because it's just unless you had some sort of valve, it's just going to flow off inside anyway. So, mm -hmm. and I, these ones that are in place now don't have that equipment. Mm -hmm. But that's something that if you're designing something new, right. right. valuable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Keeps the rats out, and turtles out. And, because I've done that before and drawn through one and this is a primer button and used to drain water out of the bottom of the fire truck and you look, what the heck is that? That's all those guts that went out. Turn. It's like the turtle into the pump and it's like putting it in a food grinder and turtle soup right there. <laughs> but well, as long as the turtle doesn't damage it. Yeah. Exactly. No, no, we couldn't usually take care of that before. All right. Do you have anything for us besides Tonight? No, no, no I, I gave the stuff that, that, that I needed to have business wise to, uh, to Caroline. Yeah. Do we have any other? I don't want to keep market. No, it's fine. Anything you have. I appreciate you uh, going down and sort of checking these out for us. And well, it started the ball rolling because I know Caroline and I had a conversation on it and we started going and I had conversations with, and it's kind of expanded, but it's expanded in a way that all it will do is benefit the community and the residents of our community right. will be able to increase the capacity um, of the fire department. Yeah. Um, so I do have one thing. Uh, being the newest member of the select board, um, would you be open to giving me a tour of the fire department? Of you tell me. Well, come, come on in there right for at least. 30, give you a tour. Give you a ride. All right. Show you how stuff to work. Come down I'll and have give pancakes. Give you a coat. I'll give you gear. Yeah, I'm always. They've got the best that. pancake breakfast. Going I'll get. I'll get to touch by you. Know. I'll put you through a duration drill. You come on down. We're <laughs> a firefighter out here. Yeah. I'm always looking. For, I'm always looking for something else. <laughs> Well, in the meantime, we may be a tour. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and does he have a hat that will get you a little plastic? Get you some hats. Get shirts. Elizabeth came home with one. Anything you want. I'm school here. Maybe we'll get you a place. Whatever your needs are. No, we're glad to do that. Thank that, you. That, that's, that's, the, that's the smart move on your part. So you know, the kid yeah, you know, that sits in that. Oh, they're driving exactly. by it all the time. I wonder what's in there. Right. Come on down. We'll show you. Okay. I'll be in touch. Okay. On the time. So, you know, if there's anybody else, then I'll do it. Okay. Okay. What's that? ISO, tell me what that stands for. Insurance Service Organization. Their responsibilities, it's a private yeah, entity, I, I, they go around to all communities and they have a regular set of forms and it's it's very intensive. It's not it's a lot of it's based on fire department, and water supply capabilities, and on our end of it. They wanted to see all of our training records, not only for the firefighters, but for officers. They wanted to know on our certification levels, the capability of all the trucks, um, our radio communication end of it, our gear, how often do we meet all the qualifications and standards that we have to do. So it's like, we check something all the way down through it. So I spent two hours with them to get it all done. It's kind of all the information, it's just a matter of finalizing it and we'll come here. Because as I said before, we're six and a nine as a community. We have two numbers. Mm -hmm. The village is a six because it has water, serviceable hydrants. The rest of the town is a nine. And if we had our 
discussion, I kind of pinned it in the corner and said, well, you come all the way up here to give me another six and a nine? Because that's not what we want. Give me six and eight. Do something. Make something change. Because when they were doing this 25 years ago, the fire department used to be able to deliver just under 2,000 gallons of water with all the equipment that they had on the wheels. Well, now we can deliver 7,000 gallons of water. So we have like change. almost tripled the capacity. That rolls out right away. All right. So, you know, I'm just throwing this stuff out there, squeeze them a little bit to say, you know, help us here. Help us out. So that should be coming. Matter of fact, maybe I'll send them off an email and see where we're at. But I know he was waiting for, what's his name, Mr. England? Right, no. McNeil. All right, McNeil, the Dover guy's now over there. England was a previous guy. Okay, so they were waiting to tie in with him. I don't know what you call it. Trouble you call it. Different, different England. John England? He was the superintendent yeah. of water and sewer oh, yeah, oh, yeah. before that's, that's the current ring of family. Oh, there you go. That's the same in years. Yeah. We have any. <laughs> Bye, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. You're very welcome. All right, so uh, the police department is not coming tonight. Uh, the fire chief, uh, right, the fire chief, the police chief, did stop by um, to um, let me know, let us know that um, Officer Stevens, when he will be leaving, so he sent an email also. So. Yep. And then um, at the end of the meeting, we'll go into non public to talk about a, a staffing issue with the police department. Okay. Uh, separate from. From uh, Officer Stevens, or Sergeant Stevens, I should say. All right. Um, so there's no new information on the police department. We've covered the highway. We've covered fire. We've covered building, uh, town administration. So we have posted the um, the support position, the bookkeeper clerical support position. Um, I don't know if you've noticed the influx of yep. applications. Um, uh, Caroline has, good, has been kind enough to put them into one central repository for us on Google. Uh -huh. um, do we have a um, an end date in, 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 uh, in mind? Let me ask it this way. I'm going to ask you, Caroline. Do you feel like we have a critical mass now that we can start interviewing folks? I mean, I've taken a look at I haven't looked at every single one of them. Some are better than others, I just said. Um, some are more serious than others. Um, but from what I remember, there may be three or five that I consider serious out of the 10 or 15 that we've gotten. So, I would agree. Do you feel that we're at a point where we can start interviewing? Um, yes, absolutely. Though, Or at least talking about them and vetting them and you know weeding okay. through them. Okay. Um, I would like to keep it open. Okay. Longer. So maybe then for next Monday... We could, um, um, we can go into non-public with you um, um, and talk about them, or you're not available next Monday. It's like only not available Monday. Okay, well then so, we can, so we can do fine. another time, or we can do it via this, um, you know, this other document that I can put in that folder. And we you can, can give like, your recommendations on it. That's fine, and then we can take it up. We'll take it up on next Monday. Actually, if you want to take a look at them, keep it open for another week. And, and then I can meet with you the following week, and we can That's talk fine. about your recommendations given what we had, and then see if anything else worthwhile is coming in. Start some interviews. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Um, budget planning. Well, we have our, our workshop. We can. It's already 8 o'clock. Well, almost 8 o'clock. So um, we, have a, we have a meeting on Saturday scheduled. So... We probably can get through this in less than ten minutes. The rest of it, so I'm mean, even quicker if I stop talking now. So, do we do we do we have the energy to keep going tonight on the budget, or do we want to call it quits on the budget workshop and, and just pick up on Saturday? Um, I probably have another half an hour or so in me, but I can. Yeah, I'm okay so, with either direction. I, the one th one point I want to bring up, just to put it in, the, in our heads, is yep. one of the things that I think the town has failed to do for years and years and years is to um, preventive maintenance. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I don't see anything in here addressing that. Okay. And I think that we need to start thinking about doing preventive maintenance or inspections or whatever, however you want to put it, furnaces and right. ACs and generators mm -hmm. and do service contracts or whatever on these pieces of equipment so they last longer mm -hmm. and they don't hiss like 
what we had happen this summer. Mm -hmm. So I really, I don't know who can do that or who should do that, if it's department heads or if it's us or if it's someone else, but we need to start doing that. And right. I'd, I'd like I, to see it go in, in this the year. I agree more, Denise, that there needs to be a list of every piece of equipment. And, and, and I know this is a lot of work for someone. Mm -hmm. like, what's the age, what's the yeah. life expectancy, right. what's the, when's the last time it's been serviced? Yeah. Um, well, maybe we could get the department heads at least that job, and then we can look at maybe, you know, um, um, vendors that will do that or, or, or something. But I just don't want it to get off our radar, because I think that we, we can, it hasn't been done for this. So the the next section that we're going to talk about is actually government building. Well, we need to finish up this part of the yep. agenda. Yeah, I mean, that is it, but that doesn't really, I mean, I'm, it is it, but it's also generators and yep. and those kind of things. But that's, but that's but part of the conversation yeah. about yeah. Uh, um, the upkeep on the buildings. Uh, to me, that falls under them, so mm -hmm. if we, so let's just hold, I, you're right. No, I get, it was just making right. a point. We don't have to talk about it like immediately. I just want it well, it's, it's on the good. radar. It's, it's very, yeah. it's, it's a good segue as soon as they, we just talk about the other mm -hmm. couple of things real quick. Yeah. Because that's the next thing on the agenda. So we have about another half an hour on this, we think. Sure. So let me just ramble real quickly through this. So um, we need, um, oh, you are going to take a look at the. I'm good with how that looks. I, I don't okay. think I need to really change the. The town administrator email which is number, uh, rather letter C, under four. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted you all to take a look at it again this week, see if there's any changes you wanted to, to make. We, we had come up with um, uh, information about the, um, the, the committee that uh, Lorraine had chaired, mm -hmm. and then um, the presentation that they made, mm -hmm. uh, she made, um, and then um, recommendations moving forward from the select board. We wanted to send that out to the town, mm -hmm. and you were all gonna make edits, if you had edits, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to yeah, do that. Yeah, I was happy okay. with it, yeah. All right, so we'll talk about that tomorrow when I come in okay. to go over tonight's meeting. Oh, they're just still sitting here. So, so but we I still come in so we can talk about it. So, okay. okay. Um, uh, advertised opening. So we have uh, Patrick Alley sent in his uh, re official resignation uh, from the planning board and the historical committee. I'm less concerned about the historical committee appointment than the planning board one. Mm -hmm. um, and we also have um, uh, a number of folks on the recreation committee that, for uh, various reasons, have um, uh, have uh, decided to terminate their, their service mm -hmm. on that on mm -hmm. that board. So uh, we have. Um, I'd like to start advertising for that. So we have templates that we've used in the past. That you want me to have this sent out tomorrow? Yep. Or so we do have one candidate, and I, I, I'm hoping he didn't fall through the cracks for planning. The planning? Um, Is he, um, did he send out an email asking maybe to be on the conservation he commission did. at first? Oh, and then yes, we yes. redirected yes. him. Yes, and then, so I um, I reached out to him and suggested he come to tonight's planning board meeting. On okay. The and so I think we'll see him. But there's okay. also an alternate position, yep. too. So it would be bad to get. Yeah, absolutely. So we can we can, we should still post it and let folks because if anyone else is interested. Um, so there's a full time and an alternate position there. Correct. And then there's two or three folks on the rec committee. Is that uh, four? Okay. So there's also the conservation commission. Um, I don't know. They had an opening, and I don't know if they have somebody that they're going to recommend that you. You did appoint somebody recently, I but I think just Miss Moise. Yes, place. but I think there's another opening. Yeah, there's two. Mm -hmm. Oh, there was two. Okay. Well, okay. So we can do the whole thing? Yep. So we can send out... The energy committee. And the energy committee. Thank you, Simon, for the reminder. Um, I'm going to add that to my note. And energy. Okay. So the good news is we have um, we have these templates we can use. I will do it tomorrow. All right. So, so before the recreation... Well, the recreation committee is... It is it is sort of funny. There doesn't have to be as many folks appointed necessarily appointed to it that there have been. Um, there could be. I know at one point they had issues with getting quorums because there were way too many people appointed. Um, I don't know how many are there now. Denise, do you remember? I have to look at my book there. Maybe eight was there six. 
think so. I don't know what the, the magic number was. I don't remember what we, we ended up with, but it's not... I'm less concerned about sort of the magic number for something like the rec committee versus... Uh, obviously, like, for for other committees, you, you, you have to have yeah. X amount, and it has to be odd, so there's no ties or anything, but the... Well, for so Rick, it helps spread the work, right? Thank you. <laughs> right. Well, that's just what I was going to say. So Thank you. Well, I was going to say, but it spreads the work. Mm -hmm. So there are five official, okay. but that doesn't make sense because it... That can't be. There are five official according to the book. So there has to be more than that because there's, there's four <laughs> of them. I'm looking at three names here right now that are either chair, secretary, and co-chair, mm -hmm. and those folks I don't believe have resigned, no, have they? No. So that leaves one, two names. So I, I guess it'll count to five. So uh, all of them are still on. Right. All of these so, five. Are, so were they? Were they? Um, what do you call it? Alternates. Maybe they're were they alternates. alternates. They must have been. I, because we there were so many more than five on the because I'm replacing Jody, right. but right. So that um, and she right. resigned. Okay. So, right. um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I know. I know I have a whole lot of names. So why don't <laughs> so why don't I get together with Caroline tomorrow? Why don't I come in to talk about the meeting for tonight? And um, we can go through the list of folks that we know that have resigned to see if they were actually alternates or what, and then that way we know what we're advertising for. Is that fair? Yeah, very fair. All right. But we know for sure we have planning. Um, but can we also have people who can be drop-ins and do work that aren't they the don't official? Have to, right, yeah. That's what I, so if we're just putting them on there, but if we yep. solicit and get people to come and help, that's not a big deal, right? Not at all. I would imagine that there wouldn't be a voting number, or I don't know if you have things you vote on. Well, we on. do, but... Well, that's um, why when it was first sort of revitalized, mm -hmm. they were what, Caroline? Like, like 16 12, 16, it was a well, huge was much, number, yeah. right? And, but we didn't want to discourage people. They also, they wanted to be on, and that, that's fine, but then you don't have a quorum to take votes because mm -hmm. people come and they go, you know? People get busy certain times of year, and they, you know, or their kids may lose interest, and so they lose interest. You know, whatever, yeah. a whole host of reasons. Who knows why people come and go? So, um, well, we you said, well, we've got to whittle it down, whittle it down. Yeah. So, they don't have to be official members to come and to volunteer to, to, work to do and some help work. us. Let me talk to Dee and, and Kelly as well. You can check the list and see who were alternates and who were permanents, but I'll check um, with Dee and mm -hmm. Kelly to see those are the co chairs. Yeah, sure. And to see how many they really feel should be on the committee, because sometimes too, too many yep. opinions kind of extend. Well, if there are too many people, then you maybe never reach any kind of consensus. Right. But, but also, when it's time, towards the end, when it's time to get the program going and getting things going, right. more hands are definitely needed. So we right. have to be able to have people come and be part of it, mm -hmm. but they don't really have to be on the official committee, I would say. No, they don't. Yeah. No, they so don't. let me find out how many they really want to have voting members of well, How many they need. I they mean. need, and I will um, get back to you. But you can find out who, the, if they were... You know, what well, five seems like have. a reasonable number to me. So, but I know that we were, there was five that I told you that left. So I'm not sure. Yeah, there was a lot. Had to have been alternate. Yeah, then. I don't know. Because I just, like I said, I just looked at those. So, and unless yeah. the book is an accurate, which mm -hmm. it may not be. We, I found Caroline and I found a mistake the other day mm -hmm. that in terms. So. Yeah. So I'll. Um, those terms that are up or they're not up. So far the position. But you can look at it, and then I'll get back to you what I, um, what they said. Okay. All right. Um, the newsletter. Tell me, how are we coming along with that? Not very well. Okay. What do you need from? Uh, well, I from need the, the whole group? content. Okay. Um, now you have that email mm -hmm. for you to go or whatever. Yep. Can we have it? Um, yeah. I will uh, take a look at it and make sure that it will actually fit. So we'll add that to my list. Of well, let, let me see what it looks like. Okay. So, May, what's the last posting date? But I did get in touch with you. 
Oh, this week. It's, I mean, this it week? all depends on the tax rate. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. The tax <laughs> rate. Oh, okay. so talk about that in a moment. Yeah. And I have to have a number of days to So I have a couple of days still. Yes. Okay. But not more than a couple. <laughs> okay, so. We're talking about the fire upon abatement. Uh, we're waiting on information from um, Avatar. Is there any uh, other uh, interest in discussing the bus stop for this evening? Or? Did we do anything with it? Mm, yeah, it uh, I have not. Did. No, I did not. Uh, I thought it from last week. I thought we tabled it last week. So. I thought you were going to. Get in touch with Judy. I got in touch with Judy about the tax rate. So if I was supposed to do it for both, I didn't. So I apparently I will reach out to Judy. I thought the tax rate might be a little more pressing, but I will uh, uh, email Judy. I will email the board, actually, not just Judy. And let them know what our concerns are. Mm -hmm. okay. Recreation. Still snack fun. On. They're still working mm -hmm. on it? Okay. Do you even hear anything, have you? Uh, Kelly came in and she has the list now, so I'm not sure whether it's Kelly or Dee that's Dee is, working on is it, working but on I haven't it. heard back about results. Right. So I'll email them. We're really getting close statuses. to. Yep. All right. So, town administration, board member activities, what do we have going on this week? Or maybe updates from last week, too, because you all had, you had, um, Couple meetings, didn't you want to speak? Uh, I did. I had Rick. budget and I had rec. Um, it was okay. Okay. I st <laughs> struggled with budget, but okay. I will be honest with you. Okay. Um, I had some wrong information, which I had to send an, e an email out to the budget committee about okay. some numbers that were not right. On, um, on the uh, uh, on the year to date. Oh, year to date. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I will. Okay. Definitely send out something with them in a, re in a um, new report. And REC, we, uh, oh, REC, we talked about um, um, the closure of this year's um, um, REC program and mm -hmm. starting up the new one. And yeah. also, in, put this in the back of your heads, we would like to have a winter carnival. Winter carnival. For, and have... Possibly use some funds for the winter rec fund. Um, we're talking about having winter games, um, maybe uh, with the fire department having a bonfire, toast marshmallows, hot hot chocolate, maybe breakfast with Frosty, that kind of stuff in a in a day. So we're looking hmm. at doing something like that this okay. year or early next year. Yeah. Um, so more to come on that, um, but we. Kind of excited about having something for winter. Yeah. Okay. This, um, this year as well, and then kind of have it offsetting like with the Salmon Falls Family Fun Day, and, and having them be part of it as well as the rec department and doing it together. Okay. And so there's some money already um, budgeted for winter rec. So. Yeah. So what, as soon as I have a better plan Not in a place. Lot, yeah. Some. No, no. But just you know, just something that okay. um, we can. With games or maybe sure. snowshoeing. Well, snow. later in the, in the winter, maybe you, you might have more chance of having snow with it. We like yeah. snow sculpture, yeah. whatever competitions yeah. or things. Yeah. So I we're like sliding. Uh, in sliding. Yeah. So we have to, you know, we have to find a place to do it for one, um, which I would like to stay on town property. Yep. Um, possibly the school or the fire station or the. Um, I'd have to talk to the cemetery about using where the ballpark is, maybe. Um, you know, just for like re winter games or something. Sure. But for sledding and stuff, I don't know where we would go um, for hill wise because then you would have to talk about private property probably. But, well, you know. there's, uh, I don't know what it looks like, well, those trees. So I don't know how <laughs> where it is, but there's um, over um, behind the um, water district next to the, um, the community gardens is an area where. Yeah. It goes down to the river, but mm -hmm. stop before the river, you're okay, I guess. 
I mean, I don't know the liability insurance. Yes. Maybe it's too overgrown, but I mean, it's one over. But just kind of, we're just talking about, you know, having some kind of in one event. So we get really excited about when we start talking about it. So that's what we would like to see happen. Look forward to hearing more about what Yes, we will have more to come. So that's all um, That's all I had. Mile, anything to update us on? No, it seems like this coming week I'm going for a ride on a fire truck. And, um, no, Wait till the snow I, comes, you can go out for a ride with a plow truck. That's no fun. Um, Hopefully your just, are okay. <laughs> we just um, the, the meeting on Saturday, and, and yep. I'll get in touch with them. I'd like to visit each of the departments. Mm -hmm. It'll be very beneficial. I would yeah. That's what I did too. And you really, I wasn't well, no, not joking. They should go up with plow truck with yeah. whoever. Yeah. I went out a couple times. It's interesting. Especially when it's really, really snowing and you can't really see where the road is anymore. And you're oh, that sounds just like hoping fun. for the best and <laughs> hoping that the person driving, and he was very good at it. I'll uh, let you know. where the road is. <laughs> it's interesting. So. But, and it, that thing bounces, I'll tell you. Yeah. Anyways, okay. Um, so we have our, our budget workshop on, um, on Saturday morning at 9, right here. Which leads me into talking about that. We'll do building permits and correspondence in a moment. I reached out to the school board chair, um, and we the reason we don't, the state hasn't set the tax rate yet, is we don't have all the information from the school district yet. And I explained to her that it's really, really late, to which she said, but this is what we did it last year. And I said, yes, we were really, really late last year. Uh, so she's put in her calendar, she said, for um, the working calendar for the for the next year school board to um, be aware of that in, she said, October. I said, well, the state says uh, September 1st. Uh, I know we didn't get it September 1st either, but <laughs> we're certainly not this late. Um, but that's when the state says it's supposed to all be in, that information, so she's going to shoot for October 1st, I guess. But anyways, the, what we're waiting on is uh, the percentage of, um, of what um, the school district is going to return back to offset taxes. Um, so we're waiting to hear what that percentage is, and they're going to take that up on Thursday evening. So we should have the number, the state should have the number Friday morning. The state has told Caroline that they believe they can get us the preliminary numbers Friday afternoon. So we are going to repost our meeting for Saturday to. Um, be able to accept the information the state sends back to us so we can set the tax rate. And then we will um, close that, the select board meeting, and um, reopen the, or open the budget hearing so we can get this taken care of because we need to get the tax rate set and the tax bills out. Yep. I did let the chair of the school board know that um, cash flow, if we... Let me just be That's me. Oh, okay. So cash flow could become an issue and that um, the county levy is due in early December, and that would be the priority bill we would be paying. Okay. So, but if she promises me that we will be getting um, uh, the information on Friday morning. So, but we'll be paying the county levy first, but we're not getting, uh, there's a fine by statute if we don't pay it, so penalty, if we don't pay it. So yes. we will be paying that first, okay. before anything. Um, so, but we'll have, it shouldn't be an issue now. We're going to get the information taken care of. So, um, what's the tax rate? Hopefully, it's everything work. So, stay tuned. All right, what have we got in the red folder, Mr. England? Well, no building permits tonight. A couple of purchase orders. Um, so, I will move purchase order 1552 in the amount of 263.75 for window envelope. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. The, yes. Second. Yeah. What's the complaint? It says town office. Oh. Don't. What is your tax envelope? Um, digital link. Digital link. Yeah, we're we'll writing digital link. So, so we set the tax bills up. Should we do that for the newsletter? So, all right. Order. Purchase order. 1552. 1552 has been moved and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay. So I have a 
note here to Board of Selectmen. <coughs> we checked with Caroline and there are sufficient funds in the supply budget to pay for the monitors. So purchase order 1554 for two 24 inch monitors at $136 each for $272 total um, to town clerk and tax collector, but that's not the. Um, Go ahead and move it now. I, I know okay. about it. Looks like it would be going to. Tumblebell. I don't know if that's the name of the company. Tumblebell is the one that gets our equipment. Yeah. You, go ahead and move the purchase okay, order. Sorry. We'll talk about it. So I move purchase order 1554 for 272. For two, two, two monitors. For two monitors. Uh, I'll yes. second that. Yeah, so the um, it's just to replace the um, the monitors in, for the tax collector and the town clerk. Okay. Is there a reason? Besides age and. I mean, are they workable? I, are they, they are workable, but they're small, and so they're having eye strain issues, so they want larger monitors. So there's money in the budget for equipment, for computer equipment. How much is it? 201? 272. $272. So we can use those monitors elsewhere, though, in the down hall, for if we need them, or any other computers we may or may not get. All right, so purchase order number 1554. Did you second it? Okay. Yep. In my own world, sorry. <laughs> purchase order number 1554 has been moved and seconded. So it just says town clerk, tax collector. Who are we making out the actual purchase order to? Tom I would say S H I slash Tom LaBelle. Um, Tom LaBelle. S H I. It's typically the company we purchase such okay. things from through Tom LaBelle. Okay. I'm going to write that. So S H I V A. Tom LaBelle. Tom yes. LaBelle. Thank you. Okay. Is there any other discussion of purchase order 1554? No. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. All right. I can either vote or not. And I will move purchase order 1503 in the amount of $200. To B and B printing for the newsletter. Yeah. Second. So, uh, purchase order is 1503. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? So it's 200 dollars to print the newsletter. So we can Do we know if that's a good price? It has been. Is it a, is it a quoted price? It has been a little less than that. Okay. Could, so it's yeah. up to 200. Any other uh, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, so we can get that page printed as soon as some of us turn in our, our homework assignments. That's not me. Okay, good. That's it. That's it? All right. I have a purchase order. Okay. Yeah. Purchase order 1502 for SHI, additional computer for bookkeeper admin support position for $1,000. Oh, sorry. Second. Okay. I'm, so, now I'm in my own world. Sorry. So it would be up to now. Tom always. Tom always wants a thousand dollars for up to a thousand dollars for the computer, and we'd never once come close to a thousand dollars for a new desktop. So, but if, uh, I'm fine with saying up to that amount. It's it, it's in. We have the money in the um, computer line. So. Um, Will this computer, Caroline, will this computer be used for assessing also, or is that going to be a separate one out of next year's budget? Um, we had talked about wanting to, or did we order one last week? I don't remember. Didn't we talk about, we were going to do one. We have not ordered any computers okay. recently. So the goal with this computer is to replace the assessing computer just to protect that data. Right. It would also be used by the new position, but as a temporary measure, um, ultimately assessing can't live on the same. It would. If this, if this new position is to remain in place, it would right. not be workable to have it be on the same machine as assessing right. in an ongoing right. way. But it's a short-term right. way to... So we need the computer, that. whether or not it's used by this, um, this part-time position when the, person, mm -hmm. when the person gets hired. But we need it for, so really should say, for assessing. It, 
then and it can be used also by the, temporarily by the new bookkeeper admin person. But I want to make yeah. sure everyone's clear of that we really need it for assessing. So the other one is um, it's a dinosaur. All right. So any other discussion on purchase order fifteen oh two? I have some. Yes. I have a comment. Whether sure. or not it's a discussion or not. Yep. I think the board of selectmen should have a, a computer because. My computer doesn't work well for internet for some reason here, and lugging it back and forth is, we should have something that if we want to come in, we have some big projects that we need to start working on, policies, procedures, whatever, and to come in here and be able to work on something. So I would like to see us get a computer for the, for the I can't even believe we don't have a computer, to be honest with you. So, I mean, one of the things that I think possibly is a, is, um, we should be able to do is it should be a laptop. So then, if we um, have our workshops, we can use the laptop to project. Caroline brings her own computer in to use the laptop to project. We shouldn't be requiring people to do that. You mean that's your personal computer? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, no, it that's, is. That's I mean, we should be able care. to be able to do our job and do it with the equipment that is supplied to us by the town. I mean. So my, I would really like to see if we don't put it in for this year, then we need to be budgeting it for next year because I really think that we need to have a computer. So we can um, we can reassess where we're at the um, IT equipment line mm -hmm. for this year. And if not, there is money in the IT equipment line for things like this. Mm -hmm. and we can assess uh, reassess it next year if we need to. But mm -hmm. so there is money available to buy um, computers. And to go along with mm -hmm. it for this building, one for but it has not been a um, it hadn't been an issue before because the past chair preferred to work on Mac, mm -hmm. so she only wanted to work on her own. She worked on her own, mm -hmm. and so that wasn't an issue. Uh, and before that, um, I don't think it was an issue for the chair before that. So yeah, um, uh, so yeah, but yeah, we are to live in a new age and. I mean, it's one we can share, for sure. I mean, it, it maybe it's, is it a laptop? Is it, well, if we wanted to do projecting Chromebooks, probably wouldn't work, right? Because they wouldn't, well, I don't know. I shouldn't say I don't know if they don't, would have that capability. So, but we should look into, we have a Chromebook currently. Yeah. So, um, we could, um, we can look to see if it would work. I don't think it would, because there's no inputs, I don't think. But, and we can look into it. And, um, um, yeah, we can, we can start exploring. Mm -hmm. But I don't want it to get lost in the shuffle either. I want to be able to say that we're going to do something either this year or next year and make it a priority for the Board of Select to have some. There should some be kind of some sort of device that we could use here. Absolutely. You know, so whether it's desktop or laptop. A laptop makes more sense if you're going to have a meeting that you can project from. But because people shouldn't have to bring their own property in all the time to work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Oh, on that, I'd like to have a publisher, Microsoft publisher, on that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. Right. So we, well, we, let's not get too that far into the weeds here. The we would need we would need to look I at. I have to use it on my own. Okay. Okay. So we would need to look at um, the, the 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 suite of software. I know uh, Caroline and I talked about this at length earlier today when I was in um, the town. Town does not have a, um, a subscription to Microsoft Office Suite. Mm -hmm. we, everything is Google based, which is good for certain things. Mm -hmm. um, but when we're trying to work with, um, and it was a, it was an advancement for sure from what we had. Don't get me wrong. But um, it's when, not you want, when you <laughs> when you want to update spreadsheets, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it. Happen sometimes. Doesn't it doesn't work. It doesn't yeah. work. It's or not always just, compatible. Yeah, exactly. For what yeah. we're trying to do. So we, <laughs> yes, that would be, it's not just for the, what you're talking about with this laptop, but mm -hmm. as we're moving forward mm -hmm. and getting um, office staff computers, we need to be looking at what kind of software. There, is, there must software. be a government rate for. There is indeed. Yeah. For Microsoft? Yeah. It's also 365, is, it's good too. It, but oh, no. do you? Yes, I don't. Well, I'm just getting used to it. Well, we, yeah. we, we, we need to be looking at that. Mm -hmm. Not just me. 
the, 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 the Google suite is good for certain things, mm -hmm. but um, it's not great for everything. Mm -hmm. So we, we need to be looking at that too. So okay. anyways, um, any other discussion on purchase order 1502? Okay, so all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Okay. okay. The, the other POs are over here. Oh, oh so but they're going to different places. Oh, okay. So. Oh, okay. Um, are you all done? Yeah, okay. okay. Um, I just have a notice of the annual meeting for New Hampshire Municipal Association. And it is on November 14th. I think you had to sign up for it, didn't you? It's the, the annual conference, and yeah. um, I am attending, oh, but the notice is about do you all want to vote for people who are running for their board? Oh. I thought oh. we did this. Well, it might have been Health Trust or the oh. assessing organization. Okay. Yes. Oh, we get okay. several of these a year last. Okay, so I'm not I sure. I don't know who's running. Does anyone we know? Association. Um, um, I don't think a lot of people are being deaf doors to get on their board. There's nothing against them. It's just added work. You know what I mean? So I'm fine with um, and, and abstaining as well. Although the uh, the three people I mentioned are nice, especially actually Eric Stoll from way up north in Columbia. He's a very nice guy. All right, we have a letter here to Alton Rollinsford. Bedford, New Hampshire, about a garage construction on South Street. You're supposed to sign it. So a few months ago, on I don't know what the address. I do remember 67, 69 South Street. They built a new garage slash shed for their motorcycles, and they didn't get a building permit. So unless there's objection, I'm going to sign this letter so we can send it off. No objection. As to a uh, LLC in Bedford, uh, that owns a number of properties. Okay. 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 Anything oh, else? Yeah. Oh. All right, so we're going to take community input. <laughs> All right, no community input. Um, we're going to, re what I, my intention is to recess the select board meeting. I'm not going to close it yet um, because I do want to go into non public quickly. At the, I don't want to make people go in and back out, um, but I did talk about a, a, a personnel issue with the police department. Okay. Um, but why don't we, so we'll recess that meeting, we'll reopen the budget workshop for a little bit, anyways. Yeah. I know you said you had half an hour in you, and I think I that rambled on for half an hour. Minutes. That probably was 45 minutes ago. So if, if folks aren't feeling like they have it in them, well, we can, can we talk about what we have left to discuss. Yep, sure we, can. And then we do this every So time. we have, we have, um, well, we're going to be working off this document. So, yep. so we have government building, and I want to discuss um, the issue that uh, Denise brought up about preventative maintenance. We talked about it a little bit, it seems like a, 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 a life ago now, <laughs> a few weeks ago, maybe a month or so ago, at maybe our first meeting. Um, when we had talked about um, a little bit of sort of a preliminary, preliminary report from the uh, police station slash um, administrative building um, uh, work group um, that um, Tisa had 
So I think we talked a little bit about preventative maintenance there, but I don't think we had an in-depth conversation at all. So we do need to do that for sure. We need to cover uh, cemeteries we've done, uh, insurance, liability insurance, that's the most recent number? Yes. Okay, so that is what it is. Uh, unless there's an objection, I think we should accept that. We were waiting on final numbers. So we've done, we did cemeteries already. Now insurance is done. Regional associations, those are the membership fees we pay for like the municipal association, traffic regional planning. That's it. That's Just those two? Those two, two right. Okay. So what do we have? Uh, those are actuals. So those are the actuals. So between the two of them, there's a $1,100 increase in our, mm -hmm. in our yearly dues. Is there any objection to staying on with them? Or mm -hmm. we don't have to be members of either of those organizations, but um, one of them was illustrated what we get out of regional planning because Colin was here tonight uh, helping with that, and he will assist the students and will assist in making sure this stays or gets on the 10 year plan, regardless of what the students come up with. But we've talked about this in the past of making sure that Portland now gets on the highway plan. Mm -hmm. um, the Municipal Association, we seem to reach out to them. Well, not maybe this week, but. Maybe weekly, yeah. Yeah, usually weekly. So um, yeah. I would suggest we probably want to you know, stick with them, but. Um, is there any uh, any contrary position to that? More to hear. Are, are you going back to gen government buildings? Yep. Oh, okay. Well, I'll just ask you what we've. Um, what we still have left to do. Okay. So okay. I figured that was just a simple one. Yep. We could just check it off. Yep. I'm sure we might have already, but no, it's not waiting. Okay, so I'm I don't have an objection signing off on that one, real quick. Yep. Regional association. Yep. Oh, okay. All right. So then we still have the police department outstanding, fire department outstanding, um, building inspector. Did we fire department? I I had. Did we have that. So he's done. All right. Done. Last week. Oh, we did do that last week because we had a lengthy conversation about the uh, on calls Great. and whether or not I might actually start calling them the right thing. Um, we have building inspector, highways, highways and streets, street lighting, sanitation. We covered, yeah, we covered uh, emergency management too. Already. Um, health. I don't believe we have done that one yet. We haven't heard from the ambulance yet, right? No, we have not. Yes, we, we have. did. Oh, we, we have, have actually. It's, yes, in it's in there. It's up to 36 now. Okay, but we did. That came confirmed? Well, so it's verbal right now. We don't have a contract in hand. I said, please hurry up and get us a contract. They haven't done that. Um, both. We and they seem to want to revise language, which is going to hold this up. But they say that their board approved 36. Oh. Okay. So, so, so we have not officially voted on that, so we can hold that up. Animal control. I seem to recall we did do that one. Are we all okay with that one? Yeah. Okay. That was it. Um, general assistance. We were, I don't believe we finalized that. I thought we had. Uh, Question, outstanding questions around community assistance organizations. Wasn't there, I what, thought you were fine. I thought that. there was something about the shelters that I have um, on. No, I um, I have no outstanding position about that. My recommendation okay. to the board is to not um, not not to do anything else, just to do what you just to approve what you have here. All right. So why don't we talk about that more on Saturday then, just in case. Okay. Parks and Rec, we did. Right. Mm -hmm. Library we did, well, they did, we've, we've included, I misspeak, um, and other, we didn't have any, of, as I recall, any objections over it, mm -hmm. they were all like the Navy Yard Three stuff like that, and debt service is what it is, mm -hmm. um, so then we just have uh, CIP, Capital Project Rather. I have a question on that, yep. you told me you wanted me to meet with them again, and I'm, I'm, I'm confused about why you want me to meet with them again. Look at my notes. I believe it was to update the spreadsheet for next year to um, That's not their job though, is it? Isn't that our job? 
Well, I think it was more about, do you really think it can last another year? Do you really think, you know, ultimately it rests with the board, right. but to get their recommendation for, um, can this piece of equipment really wait until that year, or should it, you know, it, would it be your recommendation for the other year, and make sure the amounts of money are accurate? And maybe you feel okay with that already the way it is. Well, I just, well, I just think that the CIP committee isn't really the one that, needs to be making that decision as the board of selectmen needs to be making the decision, in my opinion. Well, ultimately they do. Yes. You know. But it's a way for the department head to run the equipment to weigh in on how it's doing. I don't mind meeting with the department heads. That's why I'm meeting with CIP members again. Is where well, I'm confused. That's a, that's a point. If, if you want me to meet with each department head again, I have not, to definitely make sure I understand their priorities, but CIP committee accepted the package as a CIP, so why am I meeting with them again? That's Because I don't think they're the ones that should delegate the amount of money each year put aside. I think it that's us, and I think it's us to say whether or not we're going to go with the, the year in which they say they need it. So, what has happened in the past, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to continue this way, so the CIP committee would meet, we hear from the department heads, and we would make we either accept or not accept, we reconfigure the list of priorities. They, the, the CIP committee would make a recommendation then to the Board of Selectmen. And then the select board would then say, okay, this makes sense, they want more information, or we would reprioritize things in the out years and, and reprioritize how much money we thought should be allotted for each year. But we, wait, we relied on a recommendation from the CIP. What I brought to you was a consensus of the CIP committee based okay. on what the department had said. Okay. So, if you want me to meet with them again, I'm, I'm okay with that. I just don't know what I'm going to get from them. I we went I'm, I'm trying to remember why I was asking you, Denise. So yeah. I don't remember this conversation. So that's it was, at the, last, that it was at the last meeting. I'm struggling to it. I thought it was um, the transfer station. Yeah, good. So we had uh, Georgian, so yeah. Georgian to talk to us about that stuff. Did we have questions for Ed, maybe, for the transfer? I think it was more about, is the list comprehensive about all of your equipment? Is it listed there somewhere? Whether or not it's going to be replaced within the next eight, 10 years, mm -hmm. is it listed there somewhere? So it's more department head, not CIP members. Yeah, it's more department cool. heads, and meet with each one of those. I have no problem doing that. Because one of the things that I, I'm seeing with the department heads, and I'll be honest with you, is like, they're not thinking 10 or 15 years out. Because mm -hmm. we're, we're now getting things, I need it and I need it this year. Right. That's not CIP. Right. That's right. poor planning in some fashion right. um, with the department heads. Now we have new staff and I get that, and so we have to work around that. But I think we're not, we're not using the document the way we should be using it. Is my, oh, I mean, yeah. emergencies no, no, come no. out, yeah, and right. I get yeah. that, but I think that we have to really, really make sure that they are thinking 10 years out. And you I know? think it goes back to the earlier discussion of what's every piece of equipment that you have, mm -hmm. and what's the lifespan. Yeah. Get it on the spreadsheet. Exactly. So, because if we get that new dump truck this year, I expect to see it on the CIP this year for Ten or eight One years year. old, or five, five years old. Yeah. You know, I mean, like Mark did. Mark got his truck this year, his fire truck, but he's got another, another one on there for yeah. 2025 or whatever yeah. to start planning. Right. But I think that, and then maybe it's me not relaying that information correctly. I don't know. Uh, but so, so this is what I would suggest. Um, I agree with you, but I don't think we're going to necessarily solve it tonight. What, or even maybe this budget. What I would suggest is in the early, we have their list of priorities for for this year moving forward, or in the 2019 rather. What they believe, and we will be the ultimate arbiters as the ones, the voters will be the ultimate arbiters. We will decide whether or not we want to move it forward to the voters mm -hmm. um, for 2019. Um, early in 2019, after town meeting, see what decisions have been made. It would be a good idea to meet with department heads and have this conversation about, this is what the CIP is supposed to be. It's not an um, emergency list. It's a, 
let's plan in 10 years, you, you have whatever the piece of equipment is right mm -hmm. now, you know it's not going to last for 20 years or 10 years, whatever the lifespan is, we need to start saving for this. This is a, a means for us to plan strategically and save money so we can, uh, we don't have these, oh, I want an $80,000 articulated loader that was now, I'm not trying to be unfair to George, it says open here, he wasn't here mm -hmm. in, in previous years to do this. So, but, oh, we need this. Well, it needs to be, a, something like that should have been on the, the CIP for mm -hmm. a number of years. And maybe I'm picking a bad example, it was open to that page, or the top page. So that has been on there for several mm -hmm. years. So we knew it was coming. Now it's going to come down to us to say whether or not we think it's, it has to be a priority for this year. Can we afford it, considering the other things we're trying to look at? Is it the right year? I mean, we just bought a fire truck last year and did some major improvements. Does it make sense to wait another year? I mean, does it make sense in the life of the machinery to wait that year? So I mean, there's a whole thing we're going to grapple with, and we're going to have this frank conversation on Saturday. Because we're going to have to make this decision. But you're right. It shouldn't be a oh, I need this emergency, <laughs> come in. You really you need to plan a little more strategically. About well, what? it deferred this, this truck that he want, now wants to get this year, so he could get his pickup truck last year. Mm -hmm. So now, all of a sudden, this is urgent again. And, you know, so that's what I'm saying. Right. We, we, can't, we can't move something out just a year because you want something else. I think... I, we need to be better at our planning. I mean, well, that was our goal, is to try to be better with our planning. So I, I guess, I, I think, and maybe just after budget season, we need to meet with the department heads as a whole board and say, this is what we believe CIP is. This is what our expectation is from you. And then we need to stick it. And if something goes wrong and we know that it's an emergency, that's a whole different ballgame. But, you know, when we have a truck that's only got 16,000 miles on it and saying, I, it won't last another year, I, I don't get that. I, I, I don't, you know, and if it's because it has too big a tires, can we put little smaller tires yeah, on? Yeah, I mean, it Can we like fix it's rust? Just, can yeah. we do some of this other stuff to delay that right. purchase that right. was a whole lot less money? And, you know, those are things that yeah. I would like to have the answers before we say we have to get this big vehicle. So, yeah. maybe, I agree with you. I'm sorry, I didn't yeah. about it, but yeah. so it might be helpful then, and I don't know if we're going to have time to get the information back on Thursday, but before we can make a, an educated guess, maybe because you know we don't have a crystal ball, but make an educated decision as to whether or not we're going to keep this truck another year, or we're going to try to buy another truck in the next year, we need to answer those questions you just asked, and he's the person we've hired to give us the best advice mm -hmm. on that, so we have another conversation with him about that, if possible. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I, know, I don't know if you'll have time. I mean, he'll have time, but I don't know if you'll have time between now and... Well, I usually have Friday afternoons off, so if I can hook up with him, okay. I might be able to. But I just, you know, I, I, I just want to make sure that they understand what our, our expectation is of the rules of CIP and how yeah. we can do them. Yeah. No, 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 because I... you can't rob from every other department because you right. now think you have an emergency. Another thing we, we want to look at... Um, Ago, I didn't think I, I thought I'd still be sitting where you were sitting to me, so I didn't know um, necessarily that I'd been changing seats, but uh, whatever, how and whether the timeline was. I wasn't planning on this. We need to um, look at, um, we used to have strategic planning sessions mm -hmm. where we looked at, I'm trying to remember what time of year we did those. Was it in the fall or the early winter? Well, you did them around now, and then you did quarterly updates so that people could report on their progress. So we want to, um, it's kind of got an eight ball at this point now, but we need to get back in the practice of saying, this is what, it's not, they're not all budgetary items. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is what the select board wants to accomplish in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, one year we worked on the personnel policy, mm -hmm. and we worked on finished all the way, um, the finance, um, the purchasing policy. Um, That's how the sale of property happened. Was right, I mean, so there, there are things that, there are a number of, of, of legal priorities mm -hmm. that I personally would like to see finished someday. Um, we may or may not get to this year, but 
it would be a really good idea for us, and it's probably going to have to now wait until after the budget's done. Mm -hmm. um, so they won't be, they won't be, we want to fix something. Um, that we'll have, probably have to wait for the, for the following year. But we should have strategic planning sessions to look at what we want to be able to accomplish as a board. Or what, what, um, I mean, a part of our, 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 our role as uh, select board members is not just to uh, approve purchase orders and do those daily things. I mean, that used to be a lot of the meat and potatoes so, because it was, that's how it was every time. But to, to, to provide the, sort of the direction of how we want to see um, the town progress in certain ways or not. Um, and so I think we need to get back into that habit. We didn't do that this year. Um, so I just want to get in everyone, sort of put a bug in everyone's ear that after, after we finish this budget, um, we need to start looking at what we want to, what we want to try to accomplish. Mm -hmm. yes, we know we need, um, we don't have job descriptions for every single position in town. Mm -hmm. Well, that it needs to become a priority. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I'm just saying, I'm throwing it out there. Maybe you all yeah. don't think so. Maybe you think yeah. something else does. Yeah. So, but we, so we will take a another precious Saturday, and for a couple of hours, it's easier I find to do with that than try to incorporate it during a meeting, mm -hmm. if if that's okay. And we we have a brainstorming session as to what we would like to do. Mm -hmm. um, or we think we should be working on as a team, or mm -hmm. separately, and then whatever. But I want to just sort of throw, it, it ties in with the, the idea of the CIP. The mm -hmm. CIP is a strategic planning tool. Exactly. That's why it was, that was why it was brought back. Mm -hmm. So we don't say, oh, we need to buy a, a fire truck this year, and we haven't been putting any money away for it, or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, yeah. But the strategic planning sessions that the select board can do can also be very important. Because it can help um, lighten the load somewhere else, perhaps. I mean, we're trying to work on something, you know, trying to solve some other problem that we don't have. We we don't have a, a lack of issues that we need to work on. So that's a good thing. Um, so we don't we don't have to beat the bushes to kind of find out to find something for us to do. There's a lot of them for us to do. So anyway, so I just wanted to get that. Okay. So with that. I would suggest that we probably not have any lengthier conversation yes. about CIP tonight and hold mm -hmm. it off for the rest of the budget discussion for Saturday. Mm -hmm. Sorry to keep you. I thought we were getting it further along in this. But, and then, so close the budget workshop, and reopen the select board meeting, and I'll take a motion to go into non public session to deal with the personal issue. Make a motion to go into non public for personal issue. Uh, second up. Okay, we have a motion that's been smooth and seconded. Roll call. Denise? Yes. Miles? Yes. Mike? Yes. We're a non-public session. So folks are more than welcome to stick around.